All right, and welcome to another episode of the Jumping the Rail podcast. This is Mark Bremen coming to you from the Noodles position in Champaign, Illinois. Joined, as always, by my buddy Menders. Menders, how are we doing today? We're doing all right. Getting a little nervous, but it'll be all right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Nervous about uh, our upcoming guest or about your upcoming uh, procedures that we're looking forward to? Both. (laughs) I'm ex- so excited of our guest, but uh, yeah, yes. but surgery next week. So, and hopefully I'll be yeah. back the following week. So we'll see. You'll be ship shape. Yeah. Yep. Yep. We're, uh... <laughs> well, I'll be in some sort <laughs> of shape. <laughs> well, yeah. You may be a dinghy. You never know. I'm sitting here watching yeah. my producer noodles, uh, just making a general fuss down here. Guy trying to distract me. It's not going to work noodles. It's a, well, it kind of is because you're paying uh, yeah, attention saying, to the by cat. Saying that. <laughs> yeah, I need to look <laughs> as hard as it is. Look away from the kitty. Focus. I got to I got to focus. focus. We got quite a, quite a bit to talk about today, Menders. Uh, uh, first off, I suppose we should uh, mention who we've got is going to be joining us today for uh, for a chat. It's uh, one of you. It's a it's you got this one lined up, Menders. So I did. I'm gonna let you. I'm gonna let you tell the audience who's coming. Our guest today will be the Black Diamond Ace Perry, which we got to see in action this weekend. So I'm super uh-huh. excited. Yeah, yeah. We but made the I've trip been following to... Ace. Let's see. I've been following Ace since 2019. So he's cool. he's a lot of fun. He's yeah. a lot of fun. Yep. We made it out to uh, Terre Haute this past Saturday for Hybrid Championship Wrestling and uh, Ace earned a briefcase. <laughs> you got yelled at by several people. I did more than, yeah, but uh, more than really just the wrestlers. Show. I got yelled at by some security guards, and <laughs> I didn't even was... have my spoon. I, I know, don't know you, what the deal was. You stirred the pot without the spoon. Uh, but no, this is a really fun show, though. Uh, we had uh, some old favorites of ours popped up out of nowhere. We didn't expect. Uh, Tanner Keeler, one of our zero one guys, to, to pop up in the opening match on that show. Uh, Man, we all popped for him when he came we, out. We I was so popped. excited. Yeah, yeah, it was a lot of fun. Uh, we uh, we wound up being big winners ourselves on Saturday, Menders. Whether yep, it was we sure controversially did. or not. Uh, well, they're we, saying it's controversial, but it was a it was a coincidence. Who are we kidding? It was uh well hey the little the other little kid picked your ticket out so that's true yeah I'm free and clear I I got my fair and square but <laughs> yeah I'm the one that's the controversial one hold on I'm I'm gonna find the picture and put it up so uh we made it a big deal to make sure this kid got to draw a, a ticket that day or that night uh huh lo and behold to shout out to Lincoln lo and behold uh he drew my ticket so. Uh, <laughs> So, well, the only thing that does, though, is just that just makes it that he gets he gets to go to the next show with me. I'll, I'll get him in with my ticket. So a little, little kickback there. You got, we both won kickback. two free tickets apiece for the next uh, hybrid show. I suppose I have to take the wife. I'm going to take the wife. <laughs> She's wanted to come anyway. And then uh, right. out of the goodness of your heart, you bequeath your second ticket to, to young Lincoln there. And, uh, he's as long as Lincoln through. can make it, so as long as yep. he can make it. If not, then one of the yep. boys will get it. I'll let, or I'll let them take the tickets, and I'll pay for mine. Who knows? Oh yeah, that works. But the, but yeah, hybrid in the Terre Haute is a lot of fun. Uh, I love the venue they use. They use that little sports complex with all the with the astroturf and everything, and legitimate concessions, which is a, a nice plus. A lot of yep. indie shows, they just have chips and. Candy bars and all that stuff. Uh, I know Zero One, they do pizza. They do all that, some good mm-hmm. stuff there. But the building that they use for hybrid has like a legitimate like kitchen. They do like uh, wings and mozzarella sticks and all kinds of good stuff there. So if Shout you, uh, out if... to Strive 365. Shout yes, out yes. to Strive 365. Yes, they do. They have a great operation over there. Uh, we're going to be back in Terre Haute for Zero One. A couple weeks there, Menders. Uh, Next week. <laughs> yeah. Is it next? Yeah, a week from Saturday. Uh, a week from Saturday. <laughs> yeah, we're going to be wheeling you in there. And if we... Probably have but, a fun uh, cast for everybody to sign at that one. Yeah, so. there you go. 
But yeah, Zero One's first show in Terre Haute. It's going to be a lot of fun, a lot of fun matches. We'll talk about that stuff tomorrow, though, on the Zero One shootout. And, uh, hey, we're going to talk, we might talk a little bit about it tonight just because yeah, well, Ace has some experiences with some of the guys that I think are going to be on the show. That's, so. that's very true. That's very true. Uh, so while we're waiting on our guest, I'm going to mention uh, we put something out on uh, Facebook last week. It was based on a discussion I saw Bully Ray having on uh, Twitter about tag team wrestling. And uh, mm-hmm. I'll make sure I get the get the post up here so I can read it properly. And uh, it, there it is. And Bully got quite a bit of uh, input from his uh, fan base on there. So I kind of tweaked it. He put out his list of greatest tag team, all-time favorite tag team, uh, greatest current, all that kind of stuff. So I put this little questionnaire here on our Facebook page and we got a few comments but uh, we haven't weighed in yet Menders it's just been uh, we've kind of held our tongue until the actual show so we could do it on the air but I want to share some of the some of the comments before we get get there Uh, AJ our buddy our our head our head researcher AJ uh, chimed in Uh, he said greatest tag team in WWE history is DX I'm assuming he means Sean and Hunter. Uh, Then he said, DX, if we're talking numbers, longevity, drawing money in different eras, and being a WWE-created household name, if we're talking in-ring, probably the Hart Foundation. So DX for the Hearts, not not a bad call there. Uh, Greatest tag team of all time, like spanning all territories, he goes with the Dudleys. Uh, You know, 20-some-odd tag team titles, can't go wrong with that. Greatest tag team right. in WWE currently, uh, the Usos. It's kind of kind of a no-brainer there. Uh, greatest tag team in wrestling currently, FTR. And also his favorite current tag team is FTR. And his all-time favorite tag team is the Hardys. Uh, well, <laughs> I'll give you the Hardys <laughs> when they were... so good for a while. <laughs> hey, I'll give you the Hardys in the early 2000s. They, they, that could, okay. There could be a case made there. All right, our buddy Keith Gibson from the Clubhouse Lounge Radio chimed in also. He's more closer to our age, Mender, so I think it'll be a little bit more... Uh... His, his were a little more closer to my heart, but yeah. Right, right. So greatest tag team in WWE history, he says the Usos, uh, which is a heck of a statement for the entire history of the company. Uh, greatest tag yeah. team of all time, he says the Road Warriors. Greatest tag team in WWE currently, he says Street Profits, which let me scratch my head a little bit. I like the Street Profits. But uh, I I don't know they've been kind of in a in a bit of a a downward spiral a little bit lately so that's why he kind of surprised me when he went with them. Uh, greatest tag team in wrestling currently he went FTR. Favorite current tag team his favorite is the Acclaimed. So you know they they've got their their fan base for sure. They might be short one daddy ass after Saturday, but that's yeah that's another... what I saw. We'll talk we can yeah. talk about that later. Yeah, and then his all time favorite tag team he's got the fabulous Freebirds. Which gotta love the free birds. It's, yeah. Uh, yeah. Then uh, one more, uh, Dwayne Carter, our buddy Dwayne, uh, <laughs> hasn't been in the chat very much lately, but he made sure to put his two cents in here. Uh, of greatest he did. tag team, greatest tag team in WWE history. He says the Hart Foundation. Uh, I'm going to ignore the spelling error. Uh, I know what he meant. Uh, greatest in <laughs> WWE currently. He says the Usos. Greatest in wrestling. Uh, the Road Warriors. Favorite WWE currently. Kevin and Sammy. Uh, again, I'll ignore the misspelling of, of Zane. Uh, and then favorite in wrestling currently, the Young Bucks. Now, we could kind of, we could give Dwayne what for about a couple of those. I'm going to be, I choose to be nice. I mean, opinions are opinions and there is no wrong opinions, you know. So I've been told. But I, I'm not so sure about that at times, but. Yeah, yeah. All right. So, Menders, I'm going to put you on the hot seat here. So I'm just, I'm going to give you each one and then just okay. one at a time here uh first let me check and see here. okay yeah just making sure our guest hadn't popped up yet uh let's see greatest tag team in wwe history uh, we put them in the hall of fame the british bulldogs are my favorite in tag team history i mean they're my favorite i, I like dynamite kids so much and davy boy you, you, you just i just can't not say they weren't my favorite 
Okay, well, there's all time favorite, so that's that's the Bulldogs. Do you put them up okay. as the greatest and greatest also? I wouldn't go greatest. Okay, who's your greatest? I kind of I kind of got torn with this one because there's a bunch of them that I can think of, but mm-hmm. probably I, I'm thinking I might have to agree with AJ actually on this. I think DX was pretty good for a tag team going through, or Edge and Christian was always my favorite when I was in my early 20s. So I could go with any of them. Okay. Uh, Next up, greatest tag team of all time. I I mean, the Road Warriors were so good. Okay. Uh, Greatest tag team in WWE currently. I mean, the Usos are the obvious answer. Well. Um, KO and Sammy, I can understand people's argument there. And I wish they would bring DIY back. Because if it, if DIY was back, that would be my some, all-time favorite. There would be some fun matches out of that. with Any number of teams on the show right now. Uh, let's yeah. see. Greatest tight team in wrestling currently? I bet I know who you're going to say here. <laughs> Tough, <laughs> top guys, out. There you go. Uh, Give me my FTR any day, especially okay. after that match they had against uh, um, Jenny Juice. I was gonna say Jay White <laughs> and Juice. I was trying to be nice. Uh, hey, it's I, I say it with love because I love that tag team. Uh, favorite <laughs> tag, too. favorite current tag team. I'm gonna say FTR. FTR is my favorite current. Yes. Okay, and then until DIY favorite. comes back. Until DIY okay. comes back. <laughs> okay, and then all-time favorite, you said the Bulldogs. So, yep. Uh, so, that's a solid list there. So, I there's very little I could argue with. So, uh, yeah, it's. Uh, oh, there's a lot you could argue with there if you really well, wanted to, but. Well, if I wanted to, but I'm a nice guy. I don't cause trouble. I'm a I'm a I'm a even-tempered podcast host. You know. Till tomorrow night. Especially on Wednesdays. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, as far as I go, uh, greatest tag team in WWE history. I'm. F- I got to go, and this might surprise a lot of people. I'm going to say the New Day. I, I, mean, I would give you that. Uh, 11 or 12 time tag champs. Uh, never split up in nine years so I, that's i gotta put the, i love the dudley boys i love edge and christian i love all those great tag teams from when we were kids but i mean the success speaks for itself with the with the new day uh greatest tag team of all time i i'm agreeing with the road warriors uh they're not they're not my favorite tag team of all time but they're definitely the greatest drawing tag team of all time uh yeah i mean they were top of the card everywhere they went worldwide so i mean they got to be considered Greatest tag team of all time. Uh, greatest tag team in W currently, it's definitely the Usos. Uh, if I wasn't going to say the Usos, I guess the cl- next closest would be Sammy and Kevin. But uh, but now the Usos with the title run they had, being involved in that bloodline story, now Jay's got a title shot at SummerSlam. I, it's uh, it's then easy. Uh, greatest tag team in wrestling currently. Uh, I'm. I got to piggyback. I'm F- it's FTR. Uh, everything they do is, is great. Uh, if you haven't watched uh, Collision from the week before last, uh, yeah. it was FTR against Bullet Club Gold. It went 58 minutes, two out of three falls. It was friggin' fantastic. So good. Uh, uh, it's at the top of my ballot right now for match of the year, and we're not even to August yet. And I don't yeah. know if there's going to be anything that's going to be able to top it. But we'll get to that in our big year in review episode in December. Uh, let's see. Favorite current tag team. Uh, you know, I <laughs> it's, uh, that one's tricky because I love FTR, but then you take some of the teams like from the NWA. Uh, there's so many good ones. I'm going to have to go with... Uh, I got to go over City Machine Guns. I've always been a fan uh, in Impact. You know, right now, Shelly's their world champion. But right. for the longest time, they've always been one of my favorite tag teams. The stuff they did with the Briscoes 
back in 2007, 2008 was fantastic. Uh, all-time favorite tag team, I'm saying the Briscoes, Briscoe Brothers, was my all-time favorite. Uh, of Jack, uh, Jay and Mark, not Jack and Jerry. Uh, <laughs> I had to make sure I clarified because that is an I knew who option. you meant. Oh, well, I, know. I know you did, but I got to clarify for the listeners. Let's uh, see, Barry's in the chat. Hello, buddy. And it uh, looks like our guest is in the uh, in the window there. I can't tell if he's got his video up, but uh, you want to go ahead and bring him in here, Menders? Yes. So let's bring on in Ace Perry, the Black Diamond. All right. Hopefully. Hey, all right. Hey, Ace, can you hear us? There I he can, is. I can. I, is uh, <laughs> is my video working? Yeah. It's uh, it's there. Yeah, we see you. Yeah, we see you. Okay. Yeah, I wasn't sure because my camera and the lighting and everything, and I mean, I can't see myself, so. Okay. <laughs> well, uh, well, we can, can definitely see, see you. So you're. you're... Okay. I don't like that I can't see myself. I I can see you guys. You look great. Well, here, does this help? (laughs) Do you want me to put this up all the time so then that way you can see yourself? Does that make it better? (laughs) Whatever works. Whatever works. I guess at least you guys can see me. Yeah. Yep. Well, we were just talking earlier. mm -hmm. This is the new briefcase holder at Hybrid. Oh, I'm pretty yeah, excited yeah. about that. So, I yeah. see that match with Aaron. That was a good mm-hmm. one. Thank you. Really Thank you. Yeah. Finish. Really like the finish on that one. Mark, you have any opinions on that? Hey, it was awesome. I'm all. I was all for it. Uh, it's always fun seeing Aaron get his comeuppance, you know. But, uh, but I, that's I, that's uh, what I was thinking. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So it's a kind of a, a, a wonky situation, though, because uh, Jeffrey Johns was the holder of the briefcase. He wound up giving it up for personal reasons. You know, good thoughts to, to him. So it kind of mm. shuffled the deck a little bit in hybrid. So uh, they had to change things up a bit. When did you find out that you were in consideration to get that briefcase? Um, I, th- I think when I showed up. And I got to the building late. The show was at like six. Uh, me and yeah. Dale, Bill Patrick's pulled up at like five forty-five. Oh wow! And I walked in the door, and the promoter was like, "Hey, uh, we need you to do this, and you're you're going to be out there in like fifteen twenty minutes. What what do you think?" And I was like, uh, "All right." <laughs> <laughs> so literally, as I walked into the building fifteen minutes before the show started, he was like, "Hey." you're up for, for this. And I was like, all right, let's do it. What, whatever the boss needs, you know? Yeah. Yeah. As you should be though. Mm. So I'm curious, who were some of your inspiration getting into the business? Um, well, I know it's very common nowadays and probably based off the way that I dress now, but Jeff Hardy, um, Mm -hmm. he's like the number one edge Brian Kendrick, Brian Danielson, um, Austin Aries at the time. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, 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 I know. Very, very controversial figure <laughs> nowadays. Um, well, see, that's what we've said before has always been, well, here's the con- here's the plus side of Austin Aries. It's Austin Aries. Here's the con side of Austin Aries. It's Austin Aries. <laughs> so yeah, that's kind of where we yeah. go with it now. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and that's fair. Um, there, there was one or two more, but those, those are off the top of my head. Those are definitely guys I took from when I was first getting in as well, as far as like how to maybe like conduct myself and, um, like, like my style and the moves and all that, you know, I can see that. I can uh, definitely see that. Now, Ace, for those of our listeners that don't know you that well, uh, when did you break into to wrestling? How long have you been in the business for? Well, um, I started training, um, I believe, at the end of March in 2012 and had my first match July 6th of 2012. So a little over 11 years. Wow. That's more than I thought. 
Yeah, I yeah. Will, I know. Uh, I, well, I was talk, I was telling Mark beforehand. I I've been following you since 2019 because the first mm. match I ever saw you in was um, actually in Champagne at uh, when Iron Spirit was there. And you, yeah. I believe, if memory serves me, I believe you fought Cody Coco Lane, whatever he's going by these days. Yes. Yeah. So, One of my favorite yeah. matches of that year. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I, I believe yeah. our first and only match that we've ever had. Was it really? One of my wow. Yeah. Yeah. Cody's great. Um, yeah. I, wow. I don't remember what I was going to say, but yeah, Cody, I, I think he's in Japan or just got back from Japan. I'm not entirely sure. Well, I've but, been um, enjoy, enjoying the feud on uh, Instagram with between him and Dan's dad. So that's always fun. They're they're a little okay. bickering back and forth. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I know they've been they've been riding around together for like all, all those St. Louis people uh keep keep a tight knit group, and I know they've they've been riding around together for years now. But now I guess you know your friends become your enemies, and it loops back around, and then you become friends again and frenemies, and blah blah blah. You know, <laughs> so I'm sure it'll loop back around at some point. But yeah, yeah, people don't think. Um, that I've been wrestling as long as I have, um, which I think is uh, a pro and a con, a good thing and a bad thing. I don't know. <laughs> I can understand that. I can totally get that. Because mm. so, I was going to say, I've uh, seen you at Iron Iron Spirit. I've seen you at New Wave. I've seen you mm-hmm. at Zero One. I've seen you at New version <laughs> pretty much any of them that are close so we always try to make sure we get to so hybrid of course you, but yeah you guys are based in illinois yeah we're in, yeah, uh, we're in illinois yeah. champagne, champagne is basically illinois. our little yep yeah okay okay so you're kind of right in the the middle of everything We're within a couple of hours uh drive here or there or three four hours pretty there much, yeah yeah, yeah, it's not could, terrible. That's kind of obviously yeah. how it is in Indianapolis. So, yeah, that's, that's kind of the sweet spot. We've talked about that before with uh, other people, where we wish that more companies would bring a, a bigger show to our area because then you got the people coming from Indy, from St. Louis, from Chicago. It's kind of like a centralized yeah. location. They could really, they could really draw a lot. But uh, you know, Absolutely. hopefully, hopefully someday, you know, we have. Yeah. We've had our own local promoter that kind of forgot where he came from and decided to go down south and not come back. But that's a whole different issue. Uh, of course. So you, <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's, go ahead, Mark. Well, it, Tony Khan. It's basically. I know Tony Khan. We make fun of him all the time. Florida, to- it's a good Florida time. Tony. He, uh, Florida old Tony. TK. Old TK. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what were you gonna say, Mark? So. So you mentioned Dale Patrick's uh, right hand with him. How sore was he after his match on Saturday? He had that uh, hardcore rules match with uh, Dalton Davis. And those yeah. two beat the piss out of each other. Yeah, yeah. The, um, I mean, Dale limped to the car. And then, you know, we kind of do like a, a check-in, if not immediately after in the locker room, um, at least like uh, on the way back. And I asked him, uh, you know, how was it? How are you feeling? Anything serious? And uh, he was like, ah, just my hip. And I guess they had done like a a superplex off like that 10, 12, 15 foot ladder from like the tippy top. Yes, they did. Yeah, and they did. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I guess that's what kind of did Dale's hip in for the next few days. So he was uh, yeah. he was limping. Um, so I, I and I believe I, I think uh, did he bleed? Yeah, they yes. did the uh, skewer spot in the middle of the ring, so they, they were both the skewer the spot. And... Okay, yeah, yeah. So obviously, like his, his forehead and his hip, I know were like the two things that were bothering. Him. But we got some eye hop, and that helped it a little bit on the way we moved. <laughs> Food always <laughs> helps. <laughs> it really does. All right, I want to know then who are some of the favorites in that because I know. You, like you said, you're from Indianapolis, so I know you've had some of the bigger names of the indie stars that have been there. I want to know who are some of the ones that you really enjoyed being in the ring with. Um, that came up 
like in the Midwest area and are on TV now you're you're talking about? That or just people that are well known in the indies from like GCW or different things like that. Okay. Hmm. I mean, I guess I would be remiss if I didn't mention Shotzi Blackheart and the matches I, I, I had with her. Um, I really enjoyed the matches I had with uh, Swerve Strickland. Um, let me see. Man. I can't, th- I can't think. Well, I mean, I, I always like Darby's work. Um, right. On, on, on it, like any indie show he was ever on. Uh, I mean, it was always incredibly hard to top. You know what I mean? No matter if he was opening the show in the in the the mid card or the semi main or the main, um, I watched him and Gunther have a uh, probably the best big man little man match I've ever seen ever at an Evolve show. I don't remember oh, where wow. it happened at or which Evolve show it was, but it was the best big man little man like David Goliath story I've honestly ever seen. It, it was incredible. So, okay, uh, we Matt have Riddle. to find that match. We have to find yes. that match. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Must, yeah. I'm I'm looking here. Yeah. Uh, I think it might have happened it, in 2018, it's 2019. Like it's like there's one on here on YouTube, uh, Walter versus Darby Allen full match. That's probably it there. But yeah, that yeah, was I believe it was after the, we're done here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that was their only one-on-one. It was incredible. Yeah, it's evolved. Yeah, so that's it. So, yeah, we'll have to check that out. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. Um, Because Walter's my uh, favorite guy in the business right now. So. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the performances he's been putting on, like, the last six months or so have been incredible. I I mean, they've actually, um, you know, given him a, a, a chance to perform, like, he was 10 years ago in WXW in, in Germany against like Sammy Callahan at, at like the 16 carat and Tommy end or Malachi black. Um, yeah. it, it, he's been an incredible top tier performer for the last like 12 years, give or take. Yeah. I wondered when he cut weight, if that was going to change his style at all, but it really hasn't. He's still just knocking the shit out of people. And, you know, just yeah. Yeah. It's does, made him, you know? More, more dangerous. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so we've got some comments in the chat here. Our buddy AJ is chiming in. It says if Zero mm-hmm. One is going to start running shows in Indiana, which they're running Terre Haute in a couple weeks, it says they should bring in Ace. Ace versus Joey O'Reilly and Ace versus Jimmy Carrot both sound like they'd be great matches. Uh, it's kind of hard to argue mm-hmm. on either one of those. I've, uh, I've, me and Joey have, uh, we wrestled for New Wave one time. Um, probably in like 2017, 2018. I know I wrestled Joey um, probably a few times in my career, but uh, what what was the other guy's name? Jimmy? Jimmy Carrot. Jimmy Carrot. <laughs> okay. Okay. I Maybe if I saw his face, I I'd, I'd, I'm, I can be terrible with names. But yeah, I've been in talks with the Zero One since they're taking over like the new wave Terre Haute uh, area or whatever. So I don't think I'll be on their uh, their debut show coming up. But in the future, you know, maybe, yeah. maybe me and Jimmy will be able to, to get in there. But I am in talks Very with cool. them, yeah. Yeah. I'm just going to throw another one out there. I'd love to see you in the ring with Warhorse because he still pops up every now and then from zero one. one uh, You know, and again, for Iron Spirit, our one and only one-on-one match happened. In the main event of Iron Spirit, we went like 20 minutes somewhere in Illinois. And... Well, uh, I, I think it was the same year I wrestled Cody Lane in like 2019. Well, another one of my favorites uh, that year yeah. before he really took off. And I think we had some matches um, when he was the little Viking um, <laughs> be- before he was Warhorse. And, you know, Frank Wyatt, and he was ri- riding around. With, he was teaming with Frank Wyatt, riding around with the hooligans, and he was the mm-hmm. little Viking. And my God, I mean. <laughs> at the time, I remember that extremely, it, it literally lived up to his name. An extremely vicious, just full of, I, I don't know, like, it, he, like really young and hungry. Not, not that he isn't now, 
because he's really on top of his game now. But man, at the time, like like when you're young and hungry like that in the business, you'll just, I mean, for lack of a better term, damn near just kill anyone when when you're in the ring with them. You know what I mean? Just to prove something, oh, yeah. and that's how he was at the time. Very very intense individual. And then when we wrestled, I mean, he and I like we really pushed each other to the limit because that was our we we've we kind of came up in, in the business together over the years, shared several locker rooms together, and we finally got the opportunity to compete against one another one on one. Finally, we've been in so many scrambles together. And so we were like, let's let's go all out because this is the first time and it may be the last time or maybe the only time. So we don't know when we're going to get to do this again. So let's take everything we've learned over the last several years and just throw it at each other. And it was awesome. I really liked that one. <laughs> Not to toot my own you horn actually, or anything like that, but you know, when, when you're in there with right. someone that's, you know, very like-minded and they, they want to, you know, they're, they're of the same level as you, you just, I don't know. I mean, I give it my all no matter what. But when you're in there with someone like a warhorse or a Cody Lane or whatever, I mean, cliche, but cliche for a reason. Sky's the limit, you know. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody's got that hey, one Mark, guy. Do you have some names? Just makes you go just ratchet up just a little bit there. Yeah. 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 Mark, y'all throw some What's names that? out. We'll we'll do like a little name reference and we'll some indie guys from around. I, I kind of like to get Ace's take on it, just for the simple fact that. A lot of the Indiana people, I mean, we're starting to get to know more of them, but there's right. a lot of mm -hmm. them that we don't know very well. So, okay. Well, I've got okay, one. Well, I'll start off. I, I've, I've got, go ahead. I've got one. I got one I'd love to throw out. Uh, I, I just started, I just saw him for the first time at the Iron Spirit show at uh, City Center a couple months ago. And that's Solomon Tupu. Solomon. I, I, I like Solomon. And we wrestled one time at New Wave. Um, when they were having like some tapings because of the shutdowns had happened. And I had like four or five matches that day, but Solomon was one of them when he was the current new wave pro uh, champ and Solomon, he, he's young. He's from black and brave. So he's good. He has potential, but like, and, and he's just starting to like really like uh, find himself or a chapter of himself, um, especially character wise. His in-ring work is solid, but he has potential to be like a Jacob Fatu. So, wow. I, I I like Solomon. Yeah, yeah I, love, I love the style. I love, I love the house fight <laughs> style. So, yeah, yeah, right. yeah. So Solomon's cool. He's a cool, dude. Yeah. All right, Mender. So All got right, it. I got another name for you because I know these are some people that I know you've had matches with. So I kind of want to throw these names out there and see. Matt Fitchett. Yeah. Oh, man. Me and Matt Fitchett, I mean, we've known each other for years, probably 2013 or 2014. That's when the first time, like, we got in the ring together. Love his personality, his attitude, his work ethic, and his in-ring work. Um, we only had one match at zero one, one I believe, like, a year ago. Um, you did. I was there. I think I was the only one that, as soon as your music played, I – popped really loud and everybody was like, who, who, who? I was like yeah that was like a, a last second come to go come together type of thing um as well uh i was filling in i don't, I don't remember who for but uh yeah matt fitchett i i love matt fitchett um yeah yeah so matt Fitchett, he's great he's an og indie guy of the midwest like yeah. a legend there i say i hope he doesn't see this <laughs> uh, I had uh, Matt Bennington too. Matt Bennington, that sounds familiar. I'm terrible <laughs> with names. Can be Matt Bennington. Well, let's see. He he used to be Aaron Atlas's partner when they were the uh, Tart Foundation. Oh, Matt Brannigan. Brannigan. Sorry, I said it wrong. I screwed it up. Go figure. Matt Brannigan. Me and Matt Brannigan go way back even i mean probably to like uh you know around 2012 when i really started traveling out to rockstar pro in dayton ohio if you guys remember them or are familiar okay. that's where me and matt brannigan met and i mean we've been 
essentially friends ever since. Um, we still banter uh, like every other day online. He's he's great. And the matches I've had with him, I mean, I, I'd put up there with, with the ones I've mentioned, like War Horse and Cody Lane, Shotzi. Uh, I, I really like Matt. He's He's a goof. <laughs> He is a goof, and I think that's why we can all like him too. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah, he's finally just being himself, and it's it's working out. You know, I'm happy for yeah. him. Yeah, I saw him have a match with all this at the uh, expo in Indianapolis. Mm-hmm. I think was it this past year? Oh, wow. No, it was uh, year before. Was it was year before because yeah. I know I remember seeing it. I was, all the months kind of run together for him, but I distinctly remember him being oh, in the ring yeah. with all this. And had a hell of a match. Wow, yeah. Uh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Doesn't surprise me. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, here's you're, a you're... local guy for you. A local guy. I'm going to go with Braden Lee. I want to hear about Braden Lee. Braden Lee. I believe you um, tag team with him at Iron Spirit. Our one and only, well, second tag match we'd ever had, actually. Um, yeah, Braden, uh, I mean, he came from a New Era Wrestling Academy in Shelbyville, Indiana. Very small company, smaller town. And um, he started coming around probably around 2018 or 2019. And, you know, I was hearing a lot about him and people were like, oh, he's the new, like, pretty boy, flippy guy, like all this stuff. And so can you you know, wrestle him and teach him some things and sh- and this and that. And me and Braden eventually started traveling together and developed a, a, a pretty close friendship. Um, I, w- I went to his wedding, all that stuff. Uh, he's a really great guy. And uh, I, I really enjoy his style of wrestling. He has a great mind for the business as well, being mentored by Alex Shelley and all that. Um, but me and Braden are actually wrestling this Saturday, I believe, at Russell Arts for the 118th time. And <laughs> uh, I actually just cut a promo on him talking about how our, you know, friends, like, you know, like earlier, as I was saying, enemies become friends, friends become enemies. And we're kind of like in a lull right now. And we're going to air some of that out this Saturday. But um. But yeah, very. Uh, I like Braden. Great guy. Great wrestler. Right now, we're not on the best of terms, but that's kind of all I'm saying. Hey, Mark, you want to bring up that one from AJ that he had a few names yeah. to throw out there? Yeah, he's got a he's got a few names to throw it at you, so I'll throw them out one at a time. Uh, Uber Minch, Nate Matthews. Oh yeah, 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 Nate. I like Nate. Um, he has. Nate is, uh, Nate's great. He also has like a lot of potential that he needs to capitalize on very soon. Uh, he has like, again, great wrestler, great guy means well, but man, like he, he's, he's like so close to like breaking through to the next level, like uh, overall like performance wise, in ring wise, character wise. He he's he's right there. He he's at like this glass ceiling, like this plateau. And he just he I don't know what he needs, but he needs something in order to break through that to get to the next step and perform at the level that I know he can. Yeah. So he can be better. He's great. He can be better. Mark, you gotta see him at the expo. He was at the expo this year. Uberminch was. Yeah, he was. He fought on Friday night. Yeah. Yeah, that's right for the Black Hill Pro Show. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see the next next name AJ threw out there. Ace is Gary J. Man, all these guys I've not like I'm just now realizing I've known for ever. Gary J. Ever? Yeah, yeah. He, I had one of my first breakout performances against Gary J at IWA Mid South in 2014, I believe it was. Oh wow. And you know, I know um IWA and Ian Rotten are kind of like no more and this and that and the other. But at the right. time it is what it uh, is. But... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh at the time Ian Rotten 
because the week before the the guy I was teaming with, Caden Sade, we wrestled the hooligans and we were gonna be like the the flippy tag team, the new flippy tag team of IWA. But in our first tag match against the hooligans, which was I mean, they they carried us through that. It was it was great because of them. Uh Caden Say did a six thirty and landed on his head, unfortunately. And it put him out for about six months or so. Uh, I think maybe a full year. He almost broke his neck. Severe concussion. So that was our first tag match. And Ian was like, well, I mean, just have this one-on-one with Gary J. I know he can drag you through it until I figure out what to do with you. And Gary J, because of Gary J, it was great. Breakout performance for myself. And Ian was like, oh, well we'll put you on this singles singles run. And I was like, I don't really know what I'm doing. He was like, you'll be fine. So because of <laughs> Gary J, I was able to feud with Jimmy Jacobs and do all of these things nice. in IWA because of Gary J. And we didn't have a one-on-one match since 2014 up until Hybrid in Terre Haute, uh, like last year. And I, I, I love Gary J's mindset. Same thing that I was saying about Matt Fitchett. Work ethic, in-ring work, great guy, hits hard. I love it. I love it. Gary J, great. Hey, Mark, I got well, in trouble at that hybrid show. <laughs> Go oh, figure. <laughs> I did. Well, well I'll tell you, uh, IWA was kind of my home indie when I was living up in Aurora about 10 years ago. Actually, longer than yeah, 10 yeah. years ago, but like 07 to 09, basically. So I saw, Mm -hmm. and everybody has their two cents about Ian as a businessman, but he brought in some damn good talent, especially in that junior heavyweight division for quite a few years. Because he had like your, like Dingo and Jimmy Jacobs, uh, Jason Hades, I don't know if you remember him or not, was his heavyweight champion for a while. And, uh, Mm -hmm. but yeah, he always, the shows were so fun because of those guys. I saw a match Dingo had with Hades that got them both invited to the TPI on the spot. And on one show, so yeah, but yeah, just... yeah, and he he's always had a a good eye for talent, but yeah. that that's kind of all, all I'll say because I know right. how everyone yeah. is. But he gave but, me my first break, and he's always had a good eye for talent. And yeah, those IWA shows, some of them, if not half of them, always banged in the wrong way, you know. Right. Uh. All right, AJ had one more name on here, AJ, uh, Anakin Murphy. I don't know if you know him or not. Yeah, yeah, me and Anakin had an extensive feud at New Wave. and oh, okay. Uh, uh-huh. <laughs> you know, like, I was like, yeah, he knows who Anakin is. He knows. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We had an extensive, and he's a protege of uh, Matt Fitchett, Davey Vega, those guys, uh, Gary J. Uh, me and Anakin, I don't remember, like, was it a year ago or? I think our feud lasted a year, like 2021 into 2022. That um, sounds right. Yeah. But yeah, uh, Anakin, he and he's starting to uh, travel mm-hmm. a lot more. And ever since kind of linking up with Gary J and Matt Fitchett and those guys, he's starting to travel more and really get out there. And we were recently in a match together for Unsanctioned Bro. And he, he's come a long way. Uh, I, I noticed like while we were feuding, he, he was like, really really growing and now since i've seen him recently i've seen like how much more he has grown and anakin is a great guy but again he he has like so long to go because the potential he has what i keep going back to the potential about these guys if they just stick with it and stay the course that they're on they can be they're they're solid now but they can be great if they just stay the course, you know. And Anakin, he yeah. he's one of those guys. He's he he's got a pretty good mind overall. And so if he just sticks to what he's doing, he can be, you know, one of those indie guys that we see on TV now or something. You know, he's cool. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll tell you, his brother just started less like less than six months ago, and uh, they've been teaming oh. up quite a bit in Zero One. He's been Really, really impressive. His name's Kenny Calix, and he's I didn't even know he had a Yeah, I didn't he, either. He's not 18 he showed yet. up at the shows. Oh, he's 17. 
Okay. But yeah, he's oh, wow. just really solid. Right. In they're teaming up. They're doing the tag team thing really in the zero one. So he's a guy that that's true. A lot to check out if you get a chance. Uh, I think you'll I think you'll be impressed by him. Uh, yeah, well, I'll have to teach him a lesson too. Wow, that's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I don't know if uh, if we ever get you out in Mattoon, that'd be that'd be a match to see, you know. And we've been known to make things right. happen in zero one. So. Uh, okay. Yeah. 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 I, I've, heard, I've heard. <laughs> Sweet. Uh, well, wow. I'm, I'm, I'm going to throw one more, uh, one more name. Uh, mm. and I, I've thrown a lot of guys that I've seen in Zero One because that's my main indie I go to. But he also works hybrid. Mm. Uh, the Cobra, uh, Elite oh, Warrior. Man. You know, scariest man yeah. in the business. <laughs> I'm not uh, entirely familiar, like with his work or like when he started or anything like that i think me and him actually had a match um years ago somewhere uh that so he wrestled josh crane and sage phillips in a three-way at one of the latest shows. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. and i ran into him in the locker room and was like whoa like i haven't seen you in years that you know since we wrestled I, man I, I i wish uh i i write all my matches down so it's somewhere in my notes but um man i don't remember where it was or how long ago it was but josh he's obviously what one of my best friends as well and i yeah. pulled him aside and i let him know like hey because obviously like we know say she kind of like came up with us we knew him when he was like a camera guy and he was riding around with us before he turned wrestler so but I had to pull Josh aside and be like, hey, that Cobra guy, like, watch out. He's like, he's he's pretty cool. You know what I mean? You can do some stuff. With him. And uh, I mean, he's a great, great attitude. And from what I remember, the, the match that we had, it was difficult to work with him. But when the bell rang, I, I saw why it was difficult to work with him and why we butted heads. And it just it made the match that much better. Um. So yeah, yeah. He, he's he's cool. He's cool. Put up that comment there, Mark. AJ's little oh. comment. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> Give me That's, Ace Perry yeah. versus the Cobra. <laughs> Shut up and take my money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Maybe ACW can uh can book it. Yeah, I've right. right. Oh, uh, I can't believe well, first I remember. Need... Like... Hmm? First of all, you need to get that belt off of Aaron. That's all you need to do. That's what you need to focus on. That's the on goal. First. Get that. That's the goal. On first. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, I actually uh, have known Aaron and his brother Austin, who, you know, uh, runs HCW. I've known them since uh, they were 17, before they even like thought about wrestling. So uh, <laughs> we all we all worked in a restaurant together somewhere. Uh, in small town Indiana. So, yeah, I've known those guys forever. And now that they're in the business, uh, Aaron specifically has a sense of entitlement. Um, that And that's natural when you're younger and you're first entering the business and this, that, and the other. Um, and man, yeah, he's just not the same guy he used to be. And so anytime I'm able to get my hands on Aaron, uh, me or Dale, because Dale trained him, um, we, we enjoy smacking him around and trying to knock some sense into him, you know, but it just hasn't worked thus far. And I've wrestled Aaron four or five times now, maybe sixth time will be the charm when I cash that in. Who knows? There you go. <laughs> I was going to say at our table, I don't know if you noticed us. I'm sure you probably heard us Saturday night, but at our table, we had a six year old that was sitting with us. A little six year old buddy. My, he's one of my little buddies, but, uh, mm. He he has me yell at Aaron, shut up and retire at every one of his matches. Oh wow. Every one of his matches. We love Lincoln. Okay. Wow. So, you know, and Lincoln's like, Will you actually yell it? Yeah, I'll yell it. I don't mind. It's fine. No, no everybody yeah. hates me anyway. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, I don't mind That's hilarious. Huh. But yeah. Uh, so I got one more name for you. Coach? Hang on, real quick, man. They offered a correction. Uh, Kenny Cox is actually Anakin's nephew, not his brother. Oh wow! Yeah. Okay. But they grew, they grew wow. up as brothers. There's only there's oh, only yeah. like four years apart. It's the Eddie Chavo so. 
brotherhood kind of thing. It's an Eddie but, Chavo situation. Right. Okay, wow. Okay, all right. That's, all right. Sorry, all right. Rangers, I'll throw it back to you there. So I'm throwing out a new wave name that I know that I'm not a huge fan of, but uh, kind of wanted to get your take on him, um, Ace, and that's ZDP. Oh, man. CDP. Um, I think I'm going to side with you, but <laughs> um, because I think he and I had a – did we ever have a match at New Wave? Do you know? I can't remember off the top of my head, but I feel like he probably interfered in one of your matches or something because that's just him. Yeah, um, loud mouth, something like that. Um, yeah. I mean, we – we had a match, again, somewhere in Indiana this past winter for uh, Charlie Cruel. She put together a show, and me and ZDP had a one-on-one -on -one match. And, you know, he had that dude Baddington guy with him, and he interfered, of course, you know, all that. And I hear he's doing good things in OVW right now. Um, ZDP, I've seen him in the locker room. And he has a similar problem to Aaron in terms of, you know, ego needs to be checked a little bit. But again, back to the potential thing, I think he's holding himself back. And if he were to kick dude Baddington to the side, I think ZDP could break through several glass ceilings he's put himself under. I think ZDP... Deep down somewhere, there's a good guy. But right now, I mean, I don't know. He's really warped and in his own world. And that dude Baddington guy is just being his yes man, you know. So, ZDP, he's all right, I guess. That's what I'll say. And that's all I'll say. Well, okay. He's got the uh, he's got a shot when Zero One debuts in Terre Haute. He's got a shot at Joey O'Reilly in the heavyweight title there. So, Whoa! We might uh, see a lot yeah. more of ZDP in zero one. Mm -hmm. so. Well, maybe ixnay everything I say. He could be the new zero one heavyweight champ. All right. Yeah. No, Whatever no, he's no, doing. No. Is, I mean, no. ZDP right. was mean to me on Twitter. ZDP was mean to me on Twitter. So no, he's done. Everyone's I've cut mean him on off. Twitter. I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody's mean on Twitter. Yeah. It's pretty true. It's kind of true too. <laughs> oh man. Go ahead, Mark. Well, well, I don't. We're coming up on about forty-five minutes, Ace. We really appreciate you making the time to hang out with us a little bit and talk with us. Uh, Absolutely, yeah. Uh, where else are you going to be at? Uh, any upcoming uh, dates you want to throw out there? Man, where are you going to be at? Uh, uh, I know Russell Arts this Saturday for sure. Um, you should continue to look at the HCW dates. Their their upcoming shows. Mm -hmm. um aaw um in chicago be sure to like look at their shows i may be popping up back there uh here soon um anytime gcw or circle six is kind of in the midwest area um and also uh i i do some work with a, a group named grap house out in the vegas area they're great their stuff's on iwtv um I don't have my calendar pulled up uh, next to me, um, but I, I know the, those are a few like off the top of my head. So, okay. Well, I've, I've always got the GCW at the top of my uh, my list when they got stuff going on. So, of course, yeah, I'll definitely be keeping an eye out there. We, I've been to a few of the shows when they go up to Chicago, so they're that's another one that's a lot of fun. Just the very rowdy, so fun. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, unmatched. Almost got trampled when Nick Gage came out. The first time I went, you know, oh, yeah, it's part of it, <laughs> right? It's all part of the fun. All right, uh, well, Ace, where can uh, folks find you on social media? Um, at Ace Perry I N D Y on Instagram, Twitter, Ace Perry on Facebook. That that's pretty much like all I use. I don't use Twitter all too much. Mainly Instagram, I would say. So Instagram, Ace Perry I N D Y. Uh, Menders, you got anything else you want to throw at it? Nope, I'm just ready for him to take that belt away from Aaron, and we'll be fine. <laughs> hey, hopefully it'll be on September 9th, because we'll be there, because we won free tickets. 
We will oh, be there because wow. we won free tickets. <laughs> Both right. of us did. Sick. I did the arm we length uh, raffle <laughs> roll, the raffle of 50-50, so it paid off for once. Usually I never win these things. but uh, Oh, heck yeah. All right, that's sick. Yeah, but we'll definitely see you then for sure, hopefully sooner than that, if uh, Iron Spirit yeah. comes back around, or, you know, so. Yeah. Uh, like yeah. I said, thanks a lot for uh, hanging out with us, and we'll let you get out of there and handle whatever you got to handle. But, yeah, uh, for sure. We'll... Thank you, guys. Yeah, man. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks, Ace. Yep. All right. See ya. Bye. Yep. Well, that was fun. Get him, and he's here. Ace is, Ace is a cool guy. Uh, Ace is very cool. Yeah. He had oh, a lot more stories. Mindy. He's so going to be our, we're going to have to get him on our, uh, when we figure out how we're oh, going to do our, round our table Tales of the Territories. Yeah. Tales of the Indies, whatever you want to call it. Tales of the Indies. <laughs> but yeah, because, uh, yeah, so we'll see. Uh, that that was a lot of fun. I'm excited yes. that we were able to get, it's nice to know that we're getting some of the indie guys from other promotions. Get them in here. Let's hear about yeah. their stories and things like that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we're dialed in with zero one one for the shootout, but it's cool to get them on, on this show. We've had a few GCW guys on in the past, but I'll, I've been wanting to get more, more of the interviews going on this show again like we used to when we can. So uh, thanks to Ace for, uh, for jumping on with us. It was a lot of fun. Uh, so a couple of our friends, Menders, in, I don't want to say drunken stupor on Friday, put together a fantasy booked match card. <laughs> Between the stars of All Wrestling and Zero One USA, which is our hometown indie down here. And we went through it on the band ride to the hybrid show, but we never picked any winners, Menders. Uh, <laughs> which I don't know why. Uh, oh, I do. I do. <laughs> but I thought it might be fun if you, because you have the list, if I'm not mistaken, still. Uh, let me look real quick here. I think I do. Yep, it's right here. I got it. All right. So if you want to just kind of, we'll just kind of run them down. Oh, well, then you have to pick. You get to pick. I'm not going to pick because if I pick, you know I'm going to pick. Everybody knows who I'll pick on each I one. I know who you're going to so. pick. But, uh, but yeah, so we'll just, and we'll try to provide some uh, some <laughs> clarification for some of these guys that you, our listener, might not be aware of if you don't listen to the Zero One Shootout. Uh, <laughs> I think we oh, just popped AJ, AJ. and Mari. <laughs> <laughs> yep, AJ and Mari are the two fellows that put that list together. So let's just go one at a time here, Menders. Throw me out a match, I'll pick All you right. a winner. A no disqualification match. Anakin Murphy versus Darby Allen. All right. This is certainly not going to be a heavyweight match. Uh <laughs> Th- no, but it will I be hard hitting if Anakin's in both it. Both guys go about 140 soaking wet, I would say. <laughs> uh, I see Anakin beating the piss out of Darby and Darby just flying all over the place and, you know, just madness. Uh, the no DQ is a fun stipulation for this one. Uh, I would imagine somebody would be seriously injured in some sort of a dive off a high surface in this match. But uh, probably I think if I had to pick a winner on this, I think I would have to go with Darby Allen uh, taking this one. Yeah. With, with coffin drop in the middle. You I, know. I think I think Anakin would give him a run for his money, though. Oh, absolutely. I really do. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to skip yeah. this one. This next one. I, I'll go back to it. I'll go back to it. But okay. I'm going to skip it for right okay. now. So we're going to go next to the champion versus champion. FTR. Versus the premier soup and SK. Okay, so the premier Campbell Soup Myers SK Bishop. Uh, you might have seen Bishop in a security guard role on Dynamite about a year ago in St. Louis, also with Camaro Jackson, by the way. I think Mike Outlaw might have been there mm-hmm. too. Uh, mm-hmm. But they are two times zero one tag team champions, and very sneaky, very underhanded, very very good. And uh, Very good. I know they would they would try to throw every trick in the book at uh, FTR, but I you know uh, as much as we like the premiere, and I know you're a big premiere girl, Menders. Uh, 
it's it's got to be it's got to be FTR, but I think it would be a lot of fun. These are all matches I want to see actually happen, Menders, so far. Oh, did you freeze? Are you kidding me? All right. Well, while Menders gets back on track, I'm gonna pay a couple bills here because we're having our obligatory technical issues at this point. Yep, I'll be back. She says. Doesn't take very long usually, so. I'll just kind of bullshit. Uh, so the premier haven't seen in zero one USA. There are also regulars down in the St. Louis area. I've seen them work. Uh, I think it was Glory Pro in St. Louis, not too long ago. It's kind of the hometown promotion for your Mike Outlaw, Camaro Jackson, Warhorse guys like that. Uh, but yeah, they're all these teams and the people in zero one. If you haven't seen it, I definitely recommend going on YouTube finding it. Because there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of very under underappreciated talent in that in that company, and uh, we'll get into more of that. And if you want to hear more about these guys uh, tomorrow night on the Zero One Shootout, we'll talk about uh, all the comings and goings of Zero One USA. We'll have uh, a guest coming also from the St. Louis area, Nixie XS from the Forge uh, Training Facility. She's been working with uh, Zero One and also with the Glory Pro promotion. And uh, so she'll be joining us for that. And then we'll also break down all the upcoming shows and all that. So if you're interested in hearing about that, join us at 6 o'clock tomorrow on this YouTube channel or on uh, Facebook Live on uh, Zero One Shootout podcast Facebook page. Uh, Minder said be back. She didn't say when. She might have had to. Well, she couldn't run anywhere. She's still hobbled. But uh, I won't say too much bad about her right now. Uh a uh, quick paying of the bills. I'll I'll get this out of the way early uh, while she's gone here. ProWrestlingTees.com slash JTRPod, uh, where you go for your Jumping the Rail Podcast Network t-shirt needs. Uh, here's just a few of them here. Get, uh, you see the 40, or 40, listen to me. I've, I've had a long day. Tony's Florida Style Fast Food Booking. Uh, that's the one, if you're watching the uh, chat here, you'll see Minders is sporting that one today. Get your shit and move, the universal rule of all independent wrestling. If the action looks like it's coming your way, that means it is. Get your shit and move. Just good words to live by. Uh, got the bump card. Uh, that's one of my, that's one of my favorite ones. Independent wrestling matters, hoss fights, draw money, all kinds of good stuff. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. You can get plenty more there. Uh, looks like Minders is back with us. Minders, what happened? <laughs> it, it, normal technical difficulties. Yes. It literally just, just like froze and I was like, ah. Oh. And that took forever, and it was a pain in my butt. Yeah. So, uh, what did you end up picking? Out, uh, I want to pick an FTR. Uh, AJ okay. chimed in. Uh, Camaro, Stoop, and SK were all part of the Wardlow versus 20 security guards match on AEW. So they, yes, and they were. At the time, they were uh, holding all the gold, too. They were. It was when they were all holding their titles in 0-1. So. All right. Uh, okay. Next up, before you froze. So, uh-huh. And I hope AJ got a picture of your frozen face, because that's always funny. Oh, I'm sure it was great. I hate that. I hate it so much. I'm sure I'll get a picture of it later. Uh, okay, are you ready for the next one? We've got... Hit me. Warhorse. Warhorse. Mm-hmm. And if ever, everybody should know who Warhorse is. He's been on AEW. Oh, yeah. He fought yeah. Cody. So 4,000 pounds we've got him... of heavy metal. Yes. Versus Sammy Guevara. Or Guevara with an A. Yeah, that could be it too. Sorry, I like I told you earlier, I'm running on two hours of sleep here, guys. Give me a hey, break, okay? Hey, I hear you. I'm going on. I'm going on no nap, so I'm right there with you. So we could both nod <laughs> off during this podcast if we're not careful. So we got to keep got to keep the energy up, Menders. Got to keep. The All right. Up. So, so Warhorse and Guevara. Uh, I think Warhorse would take great pleasure in slapping Sammy across the face numerous times because he just has that kind of face, a slappable face. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. I think Sammy will fly around, but I think Warhorse will be able to catch him and throw him himself and make him fly around involuntarily. Uh, <laughs> and I know everybody's high on Sammy. Uh, he's teaming up with Garcia, doing the Jericho thing. I'm picking Warhorse. I'm going to, par- to make a pun. I'm going with the Dark Horse, which is the Warhorse on this one. No, nope. I think Warhorse will rule ass on Sammy Guevara and then enjoy a Probably. swim gym. After. <laughs> yep, and snap it to a snip dim. Next, we got Jordan Perry versus Daniel Garcia. 
speaking of Sammy's partner. Uh, well, Jordan will be doing a lot of talking. Danny will be doing a lot of dancing. Uh, dancing. <laughs> and after about 10 minutes of both, then they will wrestle. Uh, bell to bell in the ring, I'm going Daniel Garcia. If he can keep that fucking dancing to a minimum, he's a hell of a wrestler. And so's Jordan, for that matter. I'm not trying to downplay Jordan's ability in the ring. But I'm going to say, I'm going to go with the Garcia on it. He's got the youth. He's got the, I think he's got the, the athleticism. I think, I think he'd take it. I, I really like, like this next sword. match. Okay. <laughs> I really like this next match that they put together. It's going to be the FTW belt versus the Shining Light champion. So we're looking at Jacques okay. versus Jack Perry. Okay. And not saying they should form a tag team called Jacques Perry, but that's I, I'm, I'm not going to say that. So no, the Shining Light no champion, more. the Luminary no. <laughs> Jacques Kennedy. What? I said oh. no. <laughs> no tag no. team. All right. All right. Well, the Luminary Jacques Kennedy, once you get past his conception there. of he, there, I'm there. sorry, my mistake. My, I apologize. Uh, but Jacques, very tough competitor, very crafty competitor, uh, always kind of finds a way to snatch victory from the jaws of defeat, I think is a good way to put it. Uh, yep. Jack, I don't know. I mean, he had a, a solid match with Hook last last Wednesday, uh, trying out this new heel persona, getting rid of the music, getting rid of the Jungle Boy name, which I think somebody said that on this show should happen when we were going through the AEW roster. I think a bunch uh, of us have AEW said roster. that. Yes. But I think uh, we said it before the AEW roster go through. We've said it yeah. a lot. Oh, AJ, the Jack and Jacques connection. <laughs> if they were to team up. It doesn't have the panache uh -oh. of iron of powder cakes. Uh, did, no, if I'm... did you see? No, Basil and Booty connection. <laughs> oh. Well, did if I had the, to pick, did you see the? Did you get the the message right before that? Sorry, what AJ uh, said in the chat right above that. Oh, if if we not, I'll send him a link. Yeah, <laughs> last thing we need is AJ unfiltered on a podcast because I'm going to assume some With sort alcohol. of alcoholic <laughs> libation would be involved. Uh, but we appreciate the offer, AJ. We really do. But uh, uh, yeah, with uh, Kennedy and Perry, uh, I'm going to go with Jacques. I think Jacques is going to find a way to just pull a fast one on on Jack and and, uh, and walk out with it. Is it title versus title or just champion versus champion in that match? Just champion versus champion. Okay. So yeah, it's, I'm assuming they did. They didn't. The... They didn't say. That's true. That's true. They yeah, uh, they could just easily go with a double count out or a draw like back in the old days when they would do this. Yeah. But no, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna go. With, I'm gonna say uh, Jacques uh, Kennedy. Plus, if B. A. Malcolm's in his corner, that's just even more firepower. <laughs> yeah. No, no, we'll talk about B. A. here in a minute. Um, next we have the zero one junior heavyweight title on the line. Are you ready? Are you ready for this? It's Victor Analog. Versus Sting. <laughs> Sting well, is not a what... junior heavyweight. Menders. <laughs> I didn't book it. They did. Do you remember you how much book... we groaned? We groaned in oh. the van when this match oh, came yeah. up. We both did. Uh, you cannot have a senior citizen holding a junior heavyweight championship, especially when they are 260 pounds. That being <laughs> said, uh, as much as Sting enjoys beating the young guys and taking away their shine and their any momentum they might have, uh, just out of principle, I'm picking Victor Analog because I don't think Sting will make weight. There you go. There you go. Uh, how Sting. about Joey O'Reilly versus Kenny Omega? The uh, Battle of the O's. The O's. <laughs> oh. 
I couldn't help it. It was too easy. Uh, at yeah, least it's not know. at least it's not Joey O'Gun. I was gonna but, say why know. not have Joey O'Reilly against Joey O'Gun in the single? Right? <laughs> right? But no, uh I know everybody and their mother would pick Kenny Omega for this one. Uh I would Are love you to pick really Joey. gonna do this? <laughs> what? <laughs> Okay, go ahead. I want to hear your now, pick. If you, if you would have asked me this three months ago, I would say this would be a no contest because of overbooked fuckery between the elite and the uh-huh. lowlifes. Uh-huh. Uh, I think it depends. It depends on who, which, who's running the show. If AEW's running the show, Kenny wins. If Zero <laughs> One's running the show, Joey wins. Basically. Basically. Uh, so I'm going to just say, <laughs> I'm going to go, uh, I'm going to say Joey wins by virtue of his hot and heavy teammate Theo White interfering on his behalf. Okay. Uh, okay, now this is when we got into some of well, them that well, I was to be like, fair, okay, Joey yeah, is I, a better wrestler than Twinkle Toes. Yeah, that's true. Ish. Um, oh, I'm, the one I skipped earlier, I'm going to go back to it, and that okay. is Ricky Starks versus okay. B.A. Malkin, now, or this Bitch Ass, a... as I like to call him. Yeah, because you're mean. No, I'm not. What did that poor boy do to you to make you have to be so mean? Name he broke my foot. Sign harassment. He didn't break your foot. CMC broke your foot, and I'm dealing with that. No. You're no. Uh, okay. Anyway, back to Ricky Starks and B.A. Malkin. Yeah, I know. I know. CMC sucks eggs. I know. Yes. Eggs sucking dog. See, so you got new ink, apparently, this week. I saw that. He's, yeah. Very original. <laughs> <laughs> okay, AJ's chiming in. Uh, Ricky and B.A. could low-key steal the show. I do agree with that. Because I, I do BA, too. as young as BA is in, in the in wrestling, he's been very, very good in the time he's been in, in zero one. Uh stronger than people give him as credit. As much for, as I hate him. to admit it, as I'll say as much as I hate to admit it, BA is actually pretty good. Yeah. Now that said I can uh, say Ricky that Starks, on this show. <laughs> You can say it on this show. You won't say it on... If I I ask you about this tomorrow, you'll deny, deny, deny. I will. I will deny. (laughs) Uh, So, Ricky Starks apparently is a heel now. Uh, Heel on Punk. Apparently. On Collision. Uh, I much prefer heel Starks to babyface Starks. It's just more believable. I will agree. He looks like a smarmy asshole when he's a heel. And that's why that's how I like my heels. If they're not big monster heels, I want a cowardly smart ass. <laughs> Unless you got Swerve, who's just good at everything. That's but true. That, well, that being said, uh, I do think this would be a, a really fun match. I'm gonna I'm gonna pick uh, Ricky to win, just because sometimes Ba can't get out of his own way. In, in the like, he always has something distracting, whether it be the late not Shannon Smith or Derek Fullerton or Menders and her big purple spoon. There, yeah, it's just <laughs> I, I, I think Ricky would uh, would be able to take. I think Ricky has the edge in that match. Okay, now here was another one that I got pretty excited about, and that's De Cobra versus Takeshna. Takeshita. Or Takeshita. Uh, I did. I was trying to be nice, but I had to fix it. I think, I know they're both not super heavyweights, but this is your host fight on this show. One of them. They're gonna the next one is your big host fight on the show. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm sure. I, I forget what it was, but we'll get to it. But Cobra and Takeshita is your strong style host fight. A lot, yes. of, a lot of suplexes, a lot of, a lot of kicks, a lot of strikes. Uh, Takeshita will have Don Callis and his creepy music behind him in this match. 
unless the Mexican photographer comes and takes them out again. Let, let's go for uh, it. That's fine. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, uh, I, we always have this problem on the shootout trying to, how do you pick against the Cobra? I mean, right. he's, they call him the elite warrior for, for a reason. You call him the king for a reason. I call him sir call for him a reason. <laughs> <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, he is sir. Yes. Uh, you do not look him directly in the eye because at your own peril. Yeah. And he's when he's in game mode, you know. Kind of similar to Minoru Suzuki. You're uh, Kevin Kelly always says, "Don't look uh, Suzuki in the eye." Which I, I agree with that. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm at the risk of sounding like a zero one homer. I got I gotta go, Cobra. How do you how do you bet yeah. against the king? You know, right. As good as Takeshita is, I... Takeshita is very good. Huh? Are you still there? Because you what? I'm, I'm I'm still there. No, I'm there. No, I'll say it. Uh, oh, you're I breaking in and to... out really bad on my end. Hey, anyway, I think it's I think it's time for my every show headset reboot. Hang on. All right, you do your every All show right. headset reboot. All right, say something. It's kind of like your okay. It's kind of like your uh, headset reboot and my computer reboot and technical difficulties and what we always have to deal with on every one of these shows. It seems like. But yeah, between that and everything else, and watch, his will take longer this time too, like mine did, and I'll feel really bad. Are you back? Maybe. Maybe not. All right. Can you hear me? Now I can. All right. Now we're cooking. All right. You didn't mess it up too All bad right. while I was gone, did you? I don't think so. I might have. Who knows? All right. You ready? This is what I'm considering sure. the Haas fight. Ready? Mad Dog Conley versus Brody King. Oh. <laughs> 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 All right. This match is worth the price of admission itself. <laughs> I am a big fan of Big Bad Brody King, and not for nothing, uh, Connolly is my favorite character in independent wrestling right now. Like as far as his presentation, his work, ring work, the just the gimmick in general, the chain, the dog collar matches, all just he's just been fantastic. Uh, now. I'm going to assume this is one on one. There's no house of black in the uh, corner. No house for, of no house Brody. of black. No house of black. Okay. okay. No Julia Gulia Hart. Uh, then uh, I guess I this one's a hard one to pick. Uh, Brody, of course, is a badass. Everybody knows that. Uh, looks looks scary. Uh, big strong guy. Connolly is like. All due respect to Taz, Connolly is like a Tasmanian devil, like an actual Tasmanian devil you would find in Australia. He's not hes not as big as Brody, but he's ungodly strong. He's got that, I don't know if it's a Greco-Roman background where he can throw anybody. Uh, he, yeah. can take, he can take punishment, and Lord knows he can dish it out. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. Did they put a stipulation on this no DQ or anything like that, or is it just a straight up match? Nope, straight one on one. All right, I'm it's, going it's to stranglehold say... versus stranglehold, in my opinion. But I'm I'm going to say this match gets thrown out because both of them <laughs> assault the referee for trying to break up them fighting. <laughs> You're probably right, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Aubrey Ed's going to stick her nose in there, and <laughs> then they're going to say, "Nay." Yeah. <laughs> oh oh wait wait i thought that was our hoss fight but no this next one is oh, hang our on. Hoss fight. real quick hang on we got a comment aj aj the co-booker of this show 
When Connolly catches Brody in that gut wrench suplex, the whole crowd is going to go nuts. True. Yeah. <laughs> Very true. Yeah. Okay. Very true. Yes. All now, right. I Haas thought fight. that was our Haas fight, but this is our Haas fight. Okay. Maki Ito versus Rain Victoria. <laughs> <laughs> and oh oh and the stipulation and the whole thing with rain she comes out as corn fed corn fed the authentic, authentic rain victoria <laughs> authentic rain victoria no she said corn fed too i won't get in trouble for that okay and uh, then well, just making sure i'm just making sure and then but her minions mm -hmm. come and grab her and drag her back and she comes back as evil empress so you know, or the me... empress of evil so that makes me wonder is uh big kyle gonna still be involved here or is because he's running with uh kc and jared and all those guys now i i know but is this gonna be the cloak jabronis in the back with the hoods on probably the jabronis in the back with the hoods on well if we're gonna get eoe rain i'm gonna pick rain if Maki Ito, you know, Maki Ito have been running with Nick Gage lately in GCW. She's kind of joined the NDK. Oh, game. great. So she's been doing some of the deathmatchy kind of stuff. So if she starts fighting dirty, then I might have to change my pick. But I'm going to, uh, you and I are both fans of EOE Rain. Uh, yes. Just the character's awesome. So I'm going to go with Rain on this one. Okay. Then we have, here's our strong fight. Okay. Camaro versus Claudio. Hmm. I booked this match. This was an addendum to the original card. Because... Oh, yeah. That was, wasn't it? Yes. Uh, I predict Camaro will pounce Claudio out of the ring, not just into the ropes like he did Benjamin Trust and Mattoon. <laughs> Do you have that? We could show that on here. Uh, I can't. Give me, just, give me just a second here. I'm going to have to change... Okay. I'm going to have to change the backdrop to the zero right, one we'll shootout backdrop. backdrop. I mean, this has kind of become an indie show this week anyway, and we're going kind to do of, our yeah. big show. We got our two year uh, anniversary coming up in two weeks. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. where we'll focus right, we completely. Yeah. Okay. Now just don't make me show the other video. I won't. I won't. Okay. Thank you. All right. So here you go. So this is uh, Camaro Jackson, former zero one USA heavyweight champion, taking on Benjamin trust, another St. Louis indie guy. Uh, it was a really fun match overall, but this was the moment that really stood out to, to everyone, mm -hmm. <laughs> even across the Twitterverse afterward. Okay, right there. Yeah. Ah! Okay, Rub, man. seriously, <laughs> seriously, Rub, you need to voice over that, and when Camaro hits Benjamin, you need to go, Wee! We're both so tired, but delirious, delirious, yeah, that word is starting to come over both of us. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, so that's just a small sample for those that don't know Camaro, what he is capable of. Uh, as far as this match goes, Camaro and Claudio, I think Claudio will throw several European uppercuts, and Camaro will throw several chops back and forth. Yep. Uh, both men will be beaten silly. Uh, and, you know, Camaro's a friend of the show. He's been on this show. He's been on the shootout. Uh, He's so fun. He's so, so fun, fun. So good in the ring. I'm, I gotta go Claudio, though. I hate yeah. to do it. I mean, but, you know, Claudio's another guy. Uh, booking aside, pound for pound, probably the strongest guy in AEW. And also, pound for pound, maybe one of the best technical wrestlers in AEW. So he's kind of got that whole package going, you know? Yeah. He so can just I'm, get so that I, promo down. He could be a triple threat. Well, that's where you need Hero. No. Nah, nah. But have, that's the other They're saying there's a rumor he might, that Hero might join the BCC since Danielson's hurt. But I don't know. I hope that happens. Bring back the we shall see. wrestling. That would be great. All right. So, uh, anything we else? We have two Snickers? more. Two more, and then you're done. Okay. Well, one of them is not even really a match. 
One of them is just MJF cutting a promo on what a st- stupid mud show this whole thing is. <laughs> so MJF doing MJF things. We'll just Outlaw leave it at show, that. You probably say. Yeah. Outlaw. Outlaw mud show. Yeah. Um, and then finally, this is the one I would be looking forward to just because of the promos I alone. Who, I wonder who's in it. <laughs> Jimmy Carrot uh-huh. and CM Punk. Just for the promos alone. I'm telling the you. Promos, the promos would be great. The match would be great. I think I think they make for a very, very good uh, styles clash. Uh, I, I think I, if, if it would ever happen, we know maybe one of these days, who knows? But know. I think I think that Jimmy Carrot seems to respect the business enough that I think CM Punk would respect him. I think so. Plus, Jimmy's a fun guy anyway. So, and yeah. I think you... How do you not get along with Jimmy Carrot? As long as you don't try to kill him. Or put him through ladders uh, or tables or doors or whatever. Blow him in the middle of not your match. Yeah, you know. Well, yeah, something like that. You know, if somebody was to ever do that to him, I'm sure that wouldn't go over well. Uh, sure it will. But no, I do think that would be a tremendous match. Carrot and Punk. Yeah. Uh, I do think Punk would win. Uh, well, I, yeah. I but I, I a, wonder if it wouldn't go like 15, 20 minutes, though. I could see it going yeah. a little bit of Broadway. Yeah, although I could see it. It could very easily come down to where Jimmy locks in Call of the Void on Punk and gets him to tap out. Because that is yeah. a very potent submission hold. It uh, is. Plus, it's a good name for a submission hold. Yeah. I, I'm still waiting for when... Never mind. That's the other show. Uh, we'll talk about I, that on the I'll shootout. Jump, I'll jump back. I'll jump back. Yes. I'm back. Yes. You're jumping the rail to our other show, Menders. Uh, but well, no, we kind of already I, did, like a bunch. We kind of but... <laughs> did. Well, as much as I'd like to see Jimmy make Punk tap out, I I, I think Punk's going to take this one. But he would earn it. I, I'll, I'll yeah, finish with he that. He would earn it. Yeah. All right. All right. So thank you, AJ and Bari, for sending us. And I think we're going to make this a semi-regular part of the show, Menders. Every now and then we'll do an episode where we book, like, two promotions against each other. This fantasy booking. We'll, I think we would put the cart together before we go live, and then we'd just go back and forth and pick winners here and there. I've got a few uh, intriguing matchups between territories already in my head. So we'll do that. It's kind of like along the lines of how we do our fantasy draft. It won't be... Once a month, it'll be just, you know, every now and then. Once in a blue We'll bust it out. Yeah. Yeah. Nope, AJ. Yeah, there you go. See, I also thought this may be, but I don't know how escapable the Call of the Void is. He says, if J.K. locks in Call of the Void and Punk rolls through and locks in the Anaconda Vice. Yes. Yes, that's what that means. Yes, that is exactly what that means. No, 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 you don't have to. We'll we'll make this a a caucus. We'll we'll, we'll all kind of do it here. (laughs) Uh, you gonna read that so people that actually don't have video? Oh yeah. So AJ, uh, our co-booker on this on this card we just ran down. Does this mean me and Bari have to get drunk and book zero one versus WWE next week? Don't have to if you want to. I mean, go for it. But <laughs> I've uh, I don't know. Well, uh, but yeah, we'll we'll do more of this stuff down the road. It seemed it was fun. Hopefully, you guys enjoy it as much as we did. Uh. Minders, we're making incredible time right now. <laughs> Just, we're only I'm, an hour I'm and a half in. so excited. I'm I'm not gonna lie, I'm we're kind gonna, of excited. We're gonna get done on time. You can go to sleep. I say, I can, well, we'll see. But the last few, food. the last few, sh- I say, last few shows we've done have went what, like three hours. Oh, oh, you asked if I was gonna have something to show on here, and I got I forgot to put it up, so I'm gonna get this loaded up here before we say something. Oh. Uh, AEW was now in I'm... Calgary during the oh Stampede weekend. I know what this. <laughs> and uh, I know what this is. Anybody knows the Stampede? It's a huge rodeo event in Calgary. Uh, the Stampede uh, uh, Stu would always book wrestling shows there. Uh, the International Incident of or Canadian Stampede pay per view, the In Your House, was during Stampede weekend when there was like the five on five match, Har Foundation against. Uh, Austin, Goldust, Road Warriors, and Shamrock. 
So it was a whole big yep. event, and they do it every year. It's a huge thing that's been going on forever. And the AEW crew was in Calgary, and they were all uh, they were all getting into spirit, and that's fine, you know. When in Rome, you know, as they say. But something <clears throat> visually struck me as odd when uh, one of our favorite uh, punching bags showed up dressed uh, in his cowboy hat. Uh, number one, Martha yeah. Hart looked like she was going to be on King of the Hill after the show was over because she looked ridiculous. Uh, I'm, I'm not saying, I'm, I've, <laughs> ma- I've, I've made my opinions about Martha Hart known on this show before. I'm not going to go any further on it. Uh, but I'm just going to put this picture up, Minders, and let you react accordingly. Oh, Tony. <laughs> Tony, come on. He looks he looks like a first grader dressed up like a cowboy from the neck up. Sure does. I, I I'm loving the head the headset the around headset? his neck. Yeah, yeah cuz he wants to be Paul E. Right, exactly. But at least wear the damn thing straight, Tony. <laughs> that makes right. me think that he had the headset on under the hat backstage. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. We need to get a hat like that. And we need to get Lincoln to wear it. <laughs> and we need to do who wore it better. Yes. I have a feeling Lincoln will have him beat. I will see I've, what I can do about that. I see if you can make that happen, and we'll and we'll try to get that. Uh, I'll I'll see if I can make that happen. Well, first let's see if his dad has a cowboy hat there. <laughs> he can just yeah, send us. I'm a not picture. sure if his dad would. His grandpa might, maybe I don't know. We'll we'll see what we can come up with because okay. that would My be wife hilarious. Chimes in. Not the worst picture of Tony I've seen in a cowboy hat. I'm sure there have been worse. This is just ridiculous. I'm sorry. This uh, is even worse than the little cowboy hat that Kurt Angle was wearing. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, ugh, I hate that. I hate that picture. I hate that picture. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But... AJ, Marina Shafir has the hat game on lock. I didn't. I remember her. Her and her hat. I don't know her promos were atrocious. Mm-hmm. But that's neither here nor there. Yeah. Are, are we going to talk about that? Because we haven't we haven't been on for two weeks, so that collision happened. We haven't uh, talked about the heart. Who won the heart yeah, tournament? Yeah, was, yep. Uh, probably the best episode of Collision we've seen so far uh, two weeks ago. It was that's mainly that, thanks to FTR, though, because damn well, that. And, and Bullet Club. Juice and Jay. Had and a Bullet Club. In that. Yes. Yes, they did. And that was, it was so good. And did you see, Mark, they used tag ropes. They used tag ropes. The uh, Pepper Yapper called out the time at one point. Yep. Uh, they didn't, they went 58 minutes and then ended with a pin when they could have just as easily gone to the draw, which is kind of Tony's MO with some of these long matches that he does. Uh, mm-hmm. No, uh, best tag team match I've seen in. I hate putting out how many years have been, but many years. Uh, I have another cat down here. Why are you too <laughs> pretty? The See, one who tries to avoid me you during we the gotta podcast. Go home. <laughs> See, they're even telling you we gotta no, go home. She's early. in her she's in her little hidey hole here in the corner where she tries to hide from the other cat. Uh, but no, uh, easily like I I put this match up there with. I say the Briscoes and the Machine Guns from Ring of Honor, or anything with uh, Triple X and America's Most Wanted in TNA back in the day, uh, Hearts and Bulldogs, Midnight Express, Rock yep. and Roll Express. It's it's right up there, and I have really no good. issues saying that. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think that's the Briscoes' second two out of three falls match in a year. I think they beat the Briscoes last year. So AJ mm-hmm. is uh, commented says FTR are the Kings is a two out of three falls match. Uh, and yeah, the only team that ever that would have a case against it would have been the Briscoes if they hadn't lost last year, because I think they won yeah. like four or five of them. But uh, but yeah, so so FTR retains their tag titles in a fifty eight minute long two out of three falls classic. Willow beat Athena to win the Ruby. women's Owen Ruby. Thank you. It's been two weeks and. I know. Up. Well, I just but, uh, watched it this morning again, so that's the whole reason I kind of okay. remember this. <laughs> and I know there's a lot of there's a lot of people complaining that they won't let Ruby win the big one in AEW. 
I think Willow needed it more than Ruby. Ruby's in a well, finger quotes. Ruby's in the top with the outcast. She's in the top heel faction right now. So yeah. she's fine. Yeah. And and everybody loves Willow. She's bubbly and her music is catchy. Uh, strong as an ox. Uh, mm-hmm. Scary sometimes with some of the some of the girls they put her in the ring with. That she's a little stronger than she <laughs> is, I think, sometimes. <laughs> Anna Jay, yeah. But yeah, so Willow, I think, needed the uh, needed the rub a little bit more than Ruby did in this case. And I like Ruby. I'm I'm not knocking Ruby on this. That's just you know it is what it is. Uh, the main was it the main yeah the main event was uh, Punk and Starks for the men's Owen Cup. I think yep. everybody was expecting Punk to win. I honestly wasn't. I, I was expecting Starks to win. I you know I think I picked Punk. I I really I picked Punk. So I picked Starks. I did not expect Starks to win the way that he won. Right. Uh, little assistance from the ropes on the roll up and. Uh, and then what they didn't show, unless you watch Battle of the Belts, because the shows kind of rolled rolled over into each other. Uh, Liger came out to present the cup to the winner, and Ricky just snatched it from his hands and ran out, ran away like a like an asshole. Yep. And, I well, I heard about it. I didn't see it, so I'll have to go back and watch it. Yeah. Because I didn't, uh, I didn't make it through uh, Battle of the Belts or whatever. No, it was right at the beginning of Battle of the Belts, but yeah, I had to. Literally, like they showed. For some reason, my DVR, it, I got the rollover from Collision, and then when I put on uh, Battle of the Belts, it started with the rollover from Collision. So, nah. so I wasn't gonna miss. I wasn't gonna not see it. Uh, HA comments here. Uh, Willow was in the spotlight right now, though, because of winning the match with Mercedes Monet. True. Uh, yep. You'd be dumb not to give Willow a spotlight after that. Uh, it's a, there's a point you brought up, I think, Menders. Uh, if injuries don't happen, do we get Mercedes against Hayter at Wembley in some sort of a title match? We got to see if everybody's going to be back to health. Well, I'm saying, no, I'm saying, I'm, I, it's out because they're hit, they're hurt. But if they if they never get hurt, is that what that's the match we get at Wembley for the women's Probably, title? probably. See, I actually thought it might be uh, Soraya getting the title shot because this is before Tony won. <laughs> but just for name value, being in England, I would have thought that they would have put it on, have Soraya challenge. Uh, well, what I thought was Hater at the time when this started going. Right. Uh, but yeah, it's going to be Tony defending in England. Uh, opponent unknown, everything unknown, pretty much. I don't think they've announced a match yet, have they? They haven't announced anything yet. And we're what? Three weeks away from, maybe a month away from, uh, from supposedly maybe. their biggest show of all time. Uh, they've already sold seventy five thousand tickets, and they have not announced a main event. They ha- I, even just a main event, I would be okay with just do something. Yeah. Uh, well, I, that's Tony the reason just, I was surprised. Is... I was surprised they brought Pac, Pac back already. Hmm. I I thought they would wait and bring him back at Wembley. I really did. I thought they might bring him back in the build up, but I thought it would be vignettes. I didn't think they'd have him in the in the in the arenas. Yeah. But I I think Tony is scrambling because of injuries. You know, Danielson got hurt. I'm I'm gonna assume he was gonna figure heavily into the main event at all out or all in. All in zone in Wembley. I was kinda hoping we'd get uh, Danielson against uh, Saber Junior, which I've been waiting for since last year when Danielson was hurt. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to assume that we're going to get some UK talent from Progress or from uh, Rev Pro over there for that show. Uh, Osp- Osprey, I could see being in uh, a big match, you know, the US title and all that. Hopefully, not a rematch with Kenny. Uh, yeah, AJ commented oh, AJ. Maybe was Osprey 3 <laughs> main event. I hope not. They got to space these out. They got every few months. Um, Did you see? Okay. Did I actually went and read the sportsillustrated.com thing about Kitty Omega? Oh, I just oh, heard so the b- quotes. Oh, just, just a real thick list on contest. I, I'm not going to go through and talk about all of it, but I, it, yeah, the guy that wrote it is an idiot. <laughs> and he's you got Omega just, that's he's an artist. 
I, yeah, uh, you talk about shining them on. I mean, come on. It's. I mean, I, Kenny's mm-hmm. a, Kenny's a a good wrestler. I'm not gonna knock it. He's he's good at what he does. I'm not gonna say he's the Picasso of professional wrestling. Or, well, maybe Picasso's yeah. a bad example. Uh, we'll say the Da Vinci of, of professional wrestling. <laughs> I see what uh, you did there. <laughs> yeah, uh, but it's just the biggest friggin' fluff piece I think I've ever seen in this. It was. And they did it was one with bad. Moxley too, didn't they? I I didn't read the one with Moxley. I read the one with Omega, and I was like, "Are oh, you kidding me?" Uh, yeah, it's just talk. Where's the friggin' journalism here? It's ridiculous. Yeah. I dare you to let me interview Omega. <laughs> or Cornette, <laughs> even better. Yeah, let, oh, let, Brian so last interview, let Brian last interview uh, Kenny Omega and see what happens. Because at least, Ken, at no, least Brian no. uh, will acknowledge that Kenny is a good wrestler. Brian last so, interview Chris Jericho. Or Matt I Hardy. want it. <laughs> Give it to me, please. I want to see Brian last interview Matt Hardy. That would be fun, too. AJ, damn it! Yeah. <sighs> well, Menders, we're coming up on. Let, let's yeah. Let's, let's just keep going. Let's get into the let's get into the usual business. We're kind of getting off track a little bit. Uh, it is time to get into our our mainstays here on the show, starting with. After the next episode, I think I'll have another tile to put up with all of our recent inductees. After okay. this one and the next one, then then I'll be ready to to add it in there. Uh, Menders, this is uh, your uh, this is your call, and I agreed with it a hundred percent. But it's time to yeah, put a, a lady suggestion. in the Hall of Fame. Yes, but, uh, it's a uh, yeah. So JTR Hall of Fame. Uh, the pinnacle of honorees in professional wrestling in the Champaign, Illinois area. Uh, and yeah, a very deserving inductee this week. The sensational one herself, Sherry Martell. Uh, I'm so glad she's in here. Yes. I uh, love. Well, see, growing up, though, when I first started seeing Sherry, was she was scary Sherry to me. Uh-huh. Oh, but scary I love Sherry. Sherry. Oh, I popped so I bad when Brutus said Sherry. scary Sherry. <laughs> <laughs> because, you know, I like wordplay. And, you know, yeah. it Even back then, I was seven years old. And he says scary Sherry. And I'm thinking, this is genius. Brutus Beefcake <laughs> is a poet. <laughs> and he didn't know it. Blah, and he didn't blah, know. Blah. He might have known. It's hard. He's might no have. Vinnie Poffo. Yeah, that's but, true. That's true. Yeah. Uh, so you got some older pictures? I want to see. There yeah, you go. There is an older picture of Sherry. Uh, it might just be a black and white picture of Sherry. This might be from her macho, like early macho man era. Uh, here's one of her when she was wrestling. I think this is from the AWA. And she was mm-hmm. uh, she was the ladies champion for the AWA for a, a good amount of time in the mid 80s, 85, 86, I want to say. See, there she is with the belt. Uh Looking very smug. Perfect. Uh, AJ, you can't say a single <laughs> negative thing about Sherry, nor, nor can I, except maybe her makeup needed some work. Uh, she got a little carried well, away. But, you know. Hey, I'm just going to say Luna Vachon exists. So Sherry was this very, just fine. This is very true. This is very true. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so Sherry was a great wrestler. She was trained by Mula and uh, among others in the. Uh, Late seventies, early eighties, I believe, down south, and then uh, she went to the AWA. She was one of the, she was one of the ladies that WWE had brought in that I really or WWF then that could hold her own. She made a oh, great yeah. ballet. She held her own. She was able to do what she needed to do to make sure her guy won, and that there that's what I loved she, about her. There was nothing she could not do. She could wrestle. She could fight. She could talk. She could be yeah. the eye candy at ringside. She could just be a distraction. So, uh, yeah, that's why I always put her in my top 
top four or five managers of all time, right up there with Corny and Heenan and Heyman. Uh, I put Jimmy Hart in that list also, you know. But the yep. so there she is as the champion. But that's also AWA is also where she started uh, managing, you know. So she was kind of doing both. Like she was the mm-hmm. ladies' champion while managing other talent. Uh, here's this guy. I don't know if you recognize this guy, Menders. Is that Austin? That is not Austin. It looks like him. Oh, who no. is that? It does look so like it. Who in, is that? In the AWA, his name was Kevin Kelly. Not the same Kevin Kelly that's an announcer in <laughs> AEW. But he would go on to fame in the WWF in the early 90s as Nails. Oh, jeez. Okay. The convict. Yeah. He kind of let himself go a little bit. Uh, lost the a hair. Bit. Kind of got uglier. Uh, but yeah, he was kind of like the blonde heartthrob heel in the AWA. And Sherry was his manager. But I always will remember Sherry as managing these two fellas who were then the AWA Tag Team Champions. On the left, you've got uh, Pretty Boy Doug Summers and then Playboy Buddy Rose on the right. Mm-hmm. And these are the guys that feuded with the Rockers when they were in the AWA over those tag titles. And uh, they really good heels. Uh, Buddy wound up going to WWF and basically be an enhancement for... Uh, a lot of debuts. I think Kevin, Kerry Von Erich and Jimmy Stucco both debuted against them in 89-90. But they were a, a fairly dominant tag team in the AWA in the mid-80s. So, And Sherry was a big part of that. She was basically doing what you expect Sherry to do. She would jump in there with a cheap shot if you need her to, or just a distraction. Uh, but that, yep. this was about 86, 87. She goes to the WWF. Beats Moolah to win the women's championship there. I'm sorry, the ladies' championship at the time. <coughs> uh, yeah. Basically, same belt that Medusa threw in the trash can, but it, uh, the blue strap. Uh, yep. That's more of a Bari detail. <laughs> which we <laughs> discuss on, the, on Gold Rush. But she held the title for a bit. Uh, wound up dropping it to Rockin' Robin, a.k.a. Jake Roberts' sister, who can't sting a lick. Uh, anyone that's heard nope. the national anthem at <laughs> WrestleMania five can knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Don't quit your day job, honey. That's what I got to say. Uh, <laughs> there's another shot of her wrestling Moolah. Uh, looks like she's Moolah's a little sleepy there. Mm-hmm. But you can see Sherry never stopped talking. <laughs> nope. She always has something to say there. Um, after her in-ring career pretty much died down, I don't think she ever officially retired until like the 90s, but she took a backseat in-ring to be more focused on managing. And then, uh, there you go. Look at that. Macho man. Yep. I think didn't, me and the wife didn't need Elizabeth to recreate this picture. Slap her? Didn't Elizabeth slap her at some She's, point? She slapped her. She hit her with that loaded purse once. Uh, helped Brutus cut her ponytail off once. She kind of abused Sherry a little bit. <laughs> uh, and also, I got to point out, also, uh, remember Peggy Sue, Honky Tonk Man's girlfriend? Mm-hmm. That was Sherry in a wig. <laughs> that's crazy yeah uh, this bar none uh, Sherry's best run in WWF was her with Macho uh, this is pre uh, Kingdom uh, when there was this Macho Man and Sensational Sherry of course eventually uh, Macho King and Sensational Queen as we know yes and then, and then Sherry started to get creative we'll say with her with her look uh, I just picked one picture bit. that really stands out there <laughs> Dear Lord. She got, Sherry. <laughs> this would be where Scary Sherry came in. This is Scary Sherry, yes. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, she started getting a little creative. That's when Macho started wearing the cowboy hats and the full outfit instead of just the robe and the sunglasses and the headband. Uh, Sherry was a history maker, as we know, WrestleMania six. She was in the first intergender tag team match at WrestleMania. Uh, her Macho against Dusty Rhodes and Sapphire. Uh, see Elizabeth out her. there in Dusty's corner. Uh, yep. Again, interfered. Uh, Sherry never really did anything to Elizabeth, probably because Macho wouldn't allow it. If I had to guess, right? Probably. Uh, that you're but, you're probably right. Yeah, and I think I try to take that back. I think there was one incident where Sherry slapped Elizabeth, but according to Bruce Pritchard, he talked about this on. They did a Sherry episode of the podcast a couple years ago. Something to wrestle. And according to him, Sherry was terrified to to do it. She did not want to slap Elizabeth. She didn't because she didn't want to hurt her. 
Right. Number one, because she's a nice lady and didn't want to hurt somebody. But number two, I think she was worried about what Macho would do if he if she hurt Elizabeth. Yeah, that could be a little creepy. Well, a little oh, scary. Creepy, but a little scary, yeah, yeah. A little uh, scary. So WrestleMania 7, Macho loses to Warrior and has to retire. So Sherry's out a meal ticket. But what does she do less than an hour later? She joins up with the Million Dollar Man, Ted DiBiase. <laughs> yeah. Uh, she called him his, her teddy bear. <laughs> wow. Yeah. I forgot about that. I totally yeah. forgot about that. Yeah, they worked together very long. They were together maybe less than a year. Because by the time WrestleMania 8 rolled around, there you go. She yep. got herself a boy toy, Menders. She did get a boy toy. She carried the mirror kid. to the ring. She did. She, she got hit with the mirror, mirror the eventually. Ring. Yep. <laughs> she would wear uh, articles of clothing that seemed to have pieces missing. Mm-hmm. Case in point. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now, this is SummerSlam, and we've talked about this before. Uh, Sherry was involved in my favorite match at, Res- at SummerSlam 92. And no, it's not. Brett and Bulldog or LOD and Money Inc. Shawn Michaels wrestled Rick Martel. Menders, do you remember this match? It's been a long time since I've seen do it. You, do you remember the caveat in the contract about this match? I do not. Inform me, Reb. Neither man was allowed to punch the other in the face. <laughs> that was a clause put Did in you by have Sherry. Model versus the boy toy. Uh, and Sherry put that clause into the contract because she kind of, she'd been kind of flirty with, with Rick, but she was still with Sean, so she liked both of them equally. Uh, finally, and you knew it was going to happen during the match. Somebody was going to get punched in the face. And yep. there was a point in the match, and I just watched this match last week, so that's why it's fresh in my mind. Both guys <laughs> just cock the fist back, and as soon as they both do this, Sherry's up on the apron, like, trying to get them to, trying to reason with them. And as soon as they right. cocked fist, bam, fainted, dead away on the apron. <laughs> so, <laughs> and then once Sherry's out, then they start they start going to town, no punching and everything. They fight on the floor. They're fighting up the ramp. And whoever the camera guy was deserves a raise because there was a camera guy like right behind Sherry's head. And you see the guys fighting off into the distance. But then you see Sherry like raise her head up and look. Like, are they fighting over me? That kind of a thing. But then when, as soon as they started to turn around, boom, back down again. She was, she was faking. She was, it was just so good. She was, it was Classic Sherry. And then, long story short, as if that's possible, uh, at the end, Michaels is carrying Sherry back, who apparently had fainted for a solid six minutes, which is nope. not, not good if it's real, but when you're faking, you know, it is what it is. Uh, it is what it is. And the model brought out a bucket of water and, Instead of throwing it in Sean's face like everyone thought he was going to do, he dumped it on Sherry's head yep. to wake her up. She looked like a drowned rat, according to a body <laughs> heathen. And she just lost her shit, ran away, <laughs> ran down the aisle, just embarrassed to no end. And just fantastic. Best business in that whole show, outside of the main event. I mean, God knows it was better than the Macho Warrior match, which was yeah. just a clusterfuck. Mm-hmm. Uh, interesting fact, Benders, uh, you know, Sherry, obviously, Sherry Martell is her name. For right. the longest time when I was a kid, I thought she was related to Rick Martell. Not realizing <laughs> that she is from Louisiana and he's from Montreal at the time. <laughs> well, they could have been but, long lost cousins, I guess. Could have, could have been. But uh, to, as far as my research goes, that is not the case. Oh, but, okay. uh, yeah. But this is the end of Sherry's... She does the split with Sean. Uh, then she's like managing everyone against Sean for a bit. Then has a little run with Luna after WrestleMania yeah. 9. Goes to WCW. And what do you do with Sherry? You gotta put her with Flair, right? Right. And at but this point, makeup, now she though. can't... Yes. Now she <laughs> Now she can't be sensational, Sherry. That's the, that's the WWF name. So she's Sensu Sherry. They had they changed it just enough. And she came out managing Flair for a while until he retired uh, retired in the cage match with Hogan. Retired. And then, yeah. So she moved on, and there you see, she's with Harlem Heat. This is my favorite WCW run for Sherry, was her with Harlem Heat. 
and they rechristened her Sister Sherry. Sister Sherry. Yeah, and and she was awesome. The stuff with Colonel Parker was uh, comfortable to watch for the most part. Barry knows what I'm talking about. He's in the chat. But she was awesome. She was she was like their like they didn't need a mouthpiece in Harlem Heat. They both they could rap, they could do the thing, you know. But Sherry was just the icing on the cake for those two. And then uh, so she was a little she added up, bit of something that they needed. Yeah, yeah. And that went through until I think ninety seven. I think is when she retired from wrestling and just stepped away because then I think Jacqueline took over with Harlem Heat. Uh, so yeah, she. Uh, I don't have the picture, but then she came back in 2005 with Kurt, like, with Kurt Angle on an episode of SmackDown in the build-up to the match with Sean. And she sang the lyrics of Sexy Boy, but she changed it to be about Kurt. Because, as we oh, know, Sherry see. sang the original Sexy Boy entrance music. Right. Uh, Bari says, early 97. Thank you, sir. Uh but yeah, so that was a little, then Kurt put her in an ankle lock, and then that was the last we saw. <laughs> Until two thousand six, ish. There she gets her just there in finally is. WWE Hall of Famer. Uh, this was just about a year before she passed, unfortunately. But mm-hmm. she had a she made a fun speech. It was a little little long, but you know that was kind of par for the course in those days. Uh, well deserved. I mean. No, I, it's easy to say she's the greatest female manager of all time. Uh, like I said, she's in my top five. Just period. Oh, yeah. Thank, I forgot the words, AJ. I'm just a sexy <laughs> Kurt. Dot, dot, dot. I'll, I'll make, make your ankle hurt. My ankle hurt. <laughs> oh, Lord. I guess that Kurt authored those lyrics himself. But, uh, Probably. but yeah, con- congratulations in the great beyond to the sensational Sherry Martell, our they just inductee well deserved into the Hall of Fame, and in two weeks we'll have another one. We'll have we'll have to find somebody uh, very very well deserving for our anniversary episode, Menders. Okay, but, uh, sounds good. I, to I think me. I got somebody in mind, so so I think we'll be. I say I've had the past couple picks, so it should be your turn. Yeah, I've, well, no, I picked Zabisco last week or last episode. But well, you picked yeah, the Bulldogs but... before that. Yeah, we I alternated before that. Yeah, so we're kind of, I think we're kind of getting to where me and Barry are on Gold Rush, where each each episode we pick one. Like, I'll pick one, then he'll pick the next one, then back and forth. So, that might be the way to do it. And then when Gary comes back, we'll uh, get him involved also. He gets to pick, like, the next ten, then. <laughs> yeah, right. I think we'll just kind of just put, squeeze him into the rotation, just one at a time. Just to, I think he... Do I we know he, when our good friend what, Gary will be back? Uh Still undecided. Uh, he's handling some uh, some stuff at home. Uh, he does hope to be back soon. It's, it's up to him. Okay. I just told him whenever he's ready. Uh, but the uh, I, I know we have a gig coming up in September in uh, Tuscola that we're gonna have to start getting ready for. So maybe I'll find out where where his where his head's at these days. But uh, yeah, he's got the, he's got a bit on his plate, and we're giving him his uh, his space to get that handled. So hopefully hopefully soon. That's all I'll say. Good. All right. Well, Menders, we have one more order of business before we pay the bills. D a b i l l z. The bills. Like the hip people say. So, <laughs> I think we should just get to it, shall we? Let's do it. All right. I have to make sure that nobody catches me dancing off camera when that song kicks on because it's a, it's a banger. <laughs> All right, so. As long as you don't ever catch me dancing to our intro song because I do that a lot. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, if Devontae Knox is ever on, then we'll we'll do a dance off. But until then, no. Top ten Tuesday. <laughs> Thank <is> you. Tuesday. <laughs> we have a top ten list, so we do top ten Tuesday, and. Uh, this ep- this edition is a little bit behind schedule. Uh, SmackDown was in MSG just a couple weeks ago, Menders. Yeah. Where we had uh, some big business with the Bloodline and everything, and that got me thinking. I, 
I say I left this one basically up to you. I, I didn't get a chance okay. to do any research, so. Okay. Well, this one, it's basically number one and then no particular order, because it's hard to put these in order because they're so good. Yeah. Uh, our, our category this week, greatest matches in Madison Square Garden. Uh, they're going to be all WWF, WWE matches, to be honest with you. Uh, I didn't put anything from that uh, G1 Supercard show that a, uh, Ring of Honor did. It wasn't it wasn't AW yet. But I think I've got a, a pretty stout list here, so let's just get right to it. All right, number one, or number one, start with number ten. That's how we do this, right? Uh, ten! Num- numero deis, deis, as LDLC would say. Well, speaking of deis... <laughs> WrestleMania 20, WWE Championship, Eddie Guerrero defending against Kurt Angle. I love this match. This this is probably my favorite match match. on WrestleMania that year. Uh, Such a good match. Eddie doing Eddie things at the end with the boot. Uh, It was was brilliance. It really was was brilliance. It really was. Was there a more creative wrestler than Eddie Guerrero with finding ways to cheat? No. But it's like he said, See? if it ain't cheating, you ain't trying. Uh, just I love the psychology. I love the build up to the match when Kurt turned heel on him after he won, after he beat Brock at No Way Out. Uh, yeah. They did the angle where Eddie wrestled Paul with his hands handcuffed behind him, and then Kurt wound up being in the building when they thought he wasn't there and just beat the shit out of him. Uh, <laughs> and then, and then the match was, you know, you can't have a bad match with these two guys in it, especially Mm-mm. at this point in their careers, because Kurt was still reasonably healthy at the time. Uh, Eddie was... Eddie had never been better at this point. This is the best Eddie ever was, in my opinion. This is my favorite Eddie Guerrero. Yep. Uh, 97 Cruiserweight Eddie is a close second. But look <laughs> at him. He's the best shape of his life here. Uh, the mullet's gone, uh, for better or worse. The gear I'm is so on glad point. when he cut off. I was so glad when he cut off that mullet. <laughs> he was, but yeah, the whole doing the lowrider entrance and everything. It was just he was just so good as a baby face here, and everything he did, the fans just rallied around. At this point, like he could do no wrong until he tried to steal Dominic away from Ray. Yeah, I, which I don't which, understand because it was his son anyway. Right, but he'd signed over custody to to Ray. Now, they could have just hung Dominic from the rafters in the ladder match at SummerSlam instead of the briefcase. They could have. They might have gotten in a little trouble for that. Might have, just uh, a little bit. Yeah. Isn't that, what a, yeah, isn't this... that what a shark cage is for, though? Wasn't, shouldn't they just well, put yeah. him in a shark cage? They've been yeah, fine. they could have done that. Put him on a swing. He was a kid. Dominic on, on a swing. pole. Yeah. Hey, uh, also, shout out to Dominic. The Dirty Dom is the new NXT North American champion. So, yeah. So Dom Dom I has some that, gold. Which, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. I think they're letting Tony book some stuff over there. I'm starting no, to get a little sense. concerned. It makes sense to me. Judgment Day is right nipping at the heels of the bloodline for most entertaining parts of their respective television programs. And but... now they're putting Judgment Day on NXT. NXT was never part of the the brand exclusivity, you know, it was always just Raw to SmackDown and back and forth. They never, yeah. they never drafted anybody to NXT from the main roster. They just drafted people from NXT to the main roster. So main roster right. talent going to NXT is fair game. I've I I've justified that. all of this in my head, but and Dominic never got his NXT run, you know. No, that's because he wrote his adopted daddy's now, coattails. Now be nice. But, hey, I'm going to say this, though. And when he first showed up, he was greener than shit. He's oh, my gosh. He's so bad. <laughs> he's gotten so good these days, though. He Everything is good. Everything he's doing is, is, is hitting now. And yeah. Just the fan reaction itself, notwithstanding, he's getting better in the ring. His look is better. He's got, the mullet is glorious. Uh, the character work with, with Rhea is good. Yeah. I heard AJ, they're getting in a little... And a little spat. Who is? Oh, apparently Buddy Murphy's a little upset with Dominic, but I, that's well. Buddy it's, has no leg to stand on. Saying. Buddy hit on Buddy hit on Dom's sister. He has no leg to stand on here. <laughs> so he's getting he's getting what he's got coming. Um, okay. 
Uh, Anders, would you believe we have flown off the rails here? We went for talking about Eddie and Kurt Angle to talk about Dominic Mysterio's romantic issues. And NXT. <laughs> right. Shall we go to number? Shall we go to number nine, Menders? Nine. Get this, get this fiasco back on track. All right. Yeah, let's try. Number nine, Bob Backlund versus Jimmy Snuka in the cage. This is from 1982. Uh, this is heel Snuka when he yep. was like the just the madman. Uh, this was the first time he did the dive off the cage, but he missed. In this case, Bob moved out of the way. But it was the leap was glorious. He full on just pancaked that mat when he landed on it. So it would have been a really fun wee, is what you're telling wee. me. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if Jimmy's ever weed in his life, but, you know. But, yeah, this was Bob during his title run before he lost to the Sheik. But, yeah, I think everybody expected Jimmy to win the title at some point. Because, number one, he was the easily the most athletic guy they had. It, right. And his character was good. Uh, he did all the cool shit off the ropes and everything. But, yeah, he never really got his got his shot. Uh, even... Uh, and we'll get into more of Jimmy here later because I got another Jimmy match on here. I'll bet you know which one it is. I uh, figured you probably had another one on here. Yeah. All right. Number eight. Greg the Hammer Valentine versus Tito Santana. This does not surprise me one bit. This is a lumberjack match that they had uh, right before WrestleMania, like early 85. And I'm usually not a fan of lumberjack matches, Menders, because it's predictable. Every, the, all the lumberjacks are going to fight each other and all this. Right. This was actually a proper lumberjack match. Everybody, nobody really, there wasn't a huge brawl outside of the ring. At the end, there was some fuckery, but just enough. We, uh, and I say you can't have Hammer, a lumberjack match without a little bit. That's true. But Hammer was able to escape with his Intercontinental title, went on, defended against the JYD of Mania after that. But the lumberjacks, they had Bundy, you had JYD, Rocky Johnson, Jimmy Snuka, Ricky Steamboat, all kinds, like pretty much everybody that was on the card were lumberjacks during this show. And well, I that's wish the I had the actual lumberjack match. <laughs> what? Every... That's the way you run a lumberjack match. You just put oh, everybody that's obviously. on the card back oh, yeah. out there. <laughs> yeah, but it's not having Techno Techno Team 2000 out there like the one in '95. Uh, <laughs> but I digress. Uh, but no, really good. Those two always had good matches. I love their cage match, but that wasn't in the garden, so it's not on the list. It was in Baltimore. Uh, but yeah, uh, and you know how I feel about Chico. I got the uh, I got the Tito Santana red uh, throwback shirt from PWTs last week, Menders. So I'm very excited about that. I bet you uh, are. Did oh, you yeah. see what I got from from PWTs? Oh, yeah. We'll talk you about it more later. Oh yeah, we'll get to that when we pay the bills. But that's a good looking T-shirt. It, even though it, I don't, re, I didn't realize when I designed it, it looks like a mustard bottle, but it, uh, it I look like Big Bird with these pants on that I have on. I have on pajama pants that have this red stripes. I look like Big Bird. It's great. <laughs> I'll have You're to show you enough. later. You're not tall enough That's to be true. Big Bird. I'm Baby Bird then. <laughs> baby Bird. There you go. All right. Moving <laughs> on here. Uh, number six. Here's the other Jimmy match. The, the match with Morocco. Yep. Another cage match. This one, he hit the leap, but after the match was over. Right. Uh, still not quite getting his hands on that proverbial brass ring. Uh, Morocco retained the Intercontinental Championship here. But uh, everybody that was at that show, Mick Foley, Tommy Dreamer, Bubba Ray, I think Little Guido was there. They all make the point that this was the, the moment that really made Snooka's career, but they're always yeah. quick to add that you got to have two guys to make a great moment, and Morocco was so good in this match. Uh, I don't know when the last time you saw this was, Menders. But it's been a minute. Finish, the finish of the actual match was awesome because Snuka headbutts Morocco, but before he did, Morocco had signaled for the doors, so where he just did a backflip out over the ropes out the door to win the match after getting a, taking a headbutt. <laughs> it was oh, wow. literally just, it's just so good. I love Morocco. He's, he's awesome. Uh, you might say he was magnificent. Oh, you might say that. You just <laughs> might. See what I, you see what I did there? All right. Let's see what you did there. Yeah, and we've talked about that match uh, several times on this show in the recent past, so we're not going to say too much about it. Uh, number yep. five. Wait. Four. What? No, that was six. Go? My number four disappeared. What the hell? Well, where's your number five? 
We're to five well, now. Let's, let's get into number five. Uh, while we're talking about number five, I'm going to talk about. I'm going to get into. I'm going to. You're going to look number for number four. four. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right, number five, I got Dusty Rhodes against Superstar Billy Graham in the bull rope uh, match in Madison yep. Square Garden. Uh, 77, I want to say it was. It was before my time, I know that. It was before my time also, but I love my Doesn't Dusty. Doesn't mean we haven't and... seen it, but. <laughs> yes. All right, I'm going to keep hunting here, but uh, this was Dusty's only real uh, foray into uh, Madison Square Garden for a long time. Because, as we know, he was a Florida guy at that point. He was uh, yep. Eddie Graham's, his guy. But they would, this was still the territory, so they would uh, swap talent, you know. As you do, especially when you have a big draw like Dusty. Sure. And Billy, for that matter. Yes. All right. Found it. So, actually, that was my number three that was missing. But uh, oh. I just knew that I didn't have five... Uh, Tiles are so we're good. Okay. Uh, let me just add it to the, the list of rue here. Uh, we talked about Billy a lot on uh, when we put him in the Hall of Fame on the episode after he passed away, Menders. And yep. uh, this was a big part of the conversation was the matches he had with Dusty, both here and later on in Florida. Right. Uh, but uh, but yeah, so good. Uh, they told a great story over three matches. First one was straight up. Then they did the bull rope match. And then they did the Texas death match. I believe that was the order they went in. But it escalated each time. In long You mean they didn't like, They didn't start with the most escalated match first? No. They, you can do that. Oh, my gosh. I never <laughs> knew. Yeah. Did it... All right. <laughs> it's, uh... Thanks, Tony. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> all right, number four. Right. Before we I gotta, keep going. Yeah. All right, number four. WrestleMania ten. Brett versus Owen. As, as a younger brother, I rejoiced when Owen beat Brett here. <laughs> uh, this could have just been the tip of the iceberg with Owen, but they kind of let him. Kind of flounder after a mid ninety four back to the mid card. Uh, that was about the best match on that show. That was by far the best match on that show. Even, yeah. even though technically there's another match on this list that was from the same show, but I got it on there higher because of impact and historical yeah. relevance. But this match, technically, just a just a masterpiece. The just holds kiss. and counter holds, the finish, the finger, the. The finger roll. I'm thinking George Gervin now. Uh, the victory <laughs> roll that Owen countered into a cradle. Just it was just all around awesome, you know. Mm-hmm. And and we know how much we love Brett and Owen here, especially Owen for me. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. All right. Oh, Number for me three. too. I'm not. I'm not as much into Brett as I was Owen. I liked Owen a lot I more. I thought Owen was better. Uh, he did more. Yep. He, he did more. He was more athletic, better talker, uh, funnier. He was. <laughs> They would have put if they would have put as much behind him as they did Brett. Just think of what would have happened. Oh yeah, they could have done it after Brett left in '97, mm-hmm. but they put him in the European title picture with uh, with Triple H instead of they. I think he had one match with with Sean on TV, not even on a pay per view, and that just they could have they could have printed money if they would have had Owen against Brett or Owen against Sean after the screw job. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He also <laughs> kicked the breath leg out of his leg. Uh, <laughs> great promo moment there. Oh, that's great. You know, everybody gets a little little tongue tied during uh, promos in the heat of the moment, you know. It happens. Uh, yeah. All right. Let's go to number three, Menders. Another guy we lost recently. Hmm. Iron Sheik versus Sarge in the boot camp match. Yeah. This is one that would be considered overbooked fuckery these days. Uh, a lot of well, blood. Yeah. Uh, but they did it well, though. I, I love this match. It's, I mean, the angle itself was, it wrote itself. Right. And, and for these two to, and I think this may have been the blow off of, of the feud in like mid to late 90, 1984. 
before Sarge took off because he was making more money from Hasbro for uh, G.I. Joe figures. Uh, yeah. But, but yeah, just these two guys work so well together. Uh, <laughs> the picture I got where uh, Sheik has his foot up in the corner about to rim Slaughter's head into it. Yep, those loaded boots. Yep. You know, I tried to get uh, to convince B.A. Malkin to load up his boot after Sheik passed away for the uh, Edgewood show, just out of tribute. But he didn't do How'd it. that work out for you? Uh, well, he didn't do it, so he might have won. I, I think he won anyway, but, you know, it would have been easier for him if he would have loaded up the boot, you know. If he was wrestling CMC, I would have brought the stuff myself and, like, shoved it in there when he wasn't looking. But that's for another time. Did you freeze again? Oh, Menders froze again. All right. Well, while she tries to fix herself, uh, we're going to go to number two. Yeah, she just messaged me. Fucking computer, she says. I hear you. All right. Well, let's get into number two. We can always say so much about the boot camp match that hasn't been said already. But number two, WrestleMania 20. Or WrestleMania 10. I forget how Roman numerals work sometimes. Razor Ramon versus Shawn Michaels. Uh, Intercontinental Championship. The first uh, ladder match on like worldwide television. The, like the first one, of course, was uh, Brett and Sean on a house show on Coliseum Video. But this one, both guys had a claim to the title, so they decided to put it in a ladder match. They did it at the Garden at WrestleMania, uh, and it kind of changed the business for all intents and purposes because it was. Uh, not the first of its kind, but it was the template for all the other ladder matches that followed it. And uh, got Diesel out there for uh, for a few minutes, got him over without having to do much. Uh, Sean, uh, and it wasn't a handful of ladders all in the same match, just one ladder for the whole thing. We talked about this, uh, Bari and I, on uh, Gold Rush. We were talking about the Intercontinental title, so this match came up, of course. And yeah, it's just, they just kept it simple, or as simple as a ladder match could be. Uh, hang on, AJ commenting, while Minder is frozen, I'm going to drop a completely unrelated fun fact. Ty Conti and Yuka Sakazaki have some of the best movesets on Pfeiffer. We're not talking about the video game, AJ. Killing me. But but thank you for the little uh, distraction there. Alright. I hate Minders, my computer. Are you back? I hate my computer. <laughs> it's a brand Damn new computer. computer. I just got it. Technology. I know, right? Well, Men- right? We're, well Menders, we're talking about Brett and or Brett, Sean and Razor in the ladder match, WrestleMania ten. Okay. Uh, that was number yeah, two. Just, that was my number two. Okay. You got any opinions you want to add about that match? They should have had two ladders. They didn't need two ladders. <laughs> yeah, they, they only did. need one <laughs> ladder. There were two the ratio should be one ladder for every two guys in the match. Okay. That's how it should be. One to two. Now, the second ladder okay. match they had, they had two ladders. But, but no. I think this ladder match was darn near perfect. If you ask Oh, me. it was really good. Well, it was the first time the mainstream had seen a ladder match, so it was great. Yes, it is. Yep. And it was also the first time they'd seen somebody with that much chest hair. Two guys with that much chest hair. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> Holy crap. <laughs> <laughs> two very hirsute fellows in that match. Uh, Very. Plus, the mullets were fantastic in that match. On all, all three guys, Brett, or Sean Razor and Diesel, all had pretty spectacular mullets in that match. They did. They did. Yes. <laughs> all right. Well, are you ready for number one here, uh, Minders? I'm ready. F- yes, I'm ready for number one. All right. Not only do I think it's the greatest, it's also my favorite match to ever happen at Madison Square Garden. Triple H versus Cactus Jack in the street fight at the Royal Rumble in 2000. And I could have very easily had two matches between these two guys on here because in on the September 22nd, 97 Raw, when that's known mainly for being when Austin stunned McMahon for the first time, that's the night the Cactus Jack debuted on television wrestling Hunter Hearst Helmsley. Very and nice. They had that, and they had that false count anywhere match. It was really good. But this match was, was so good. If you like death matches, if you like... Uh, I'm not going to say Outlaw Mud Show stuff because this is far from uh, Outlaw Mud Show business. 
Uh, there's some things that made, that made me scratch my head. Uh, when Cactus first pulled out the 2x4 wrapped in barbed wire, it became very disheveled after he used it a couple times. And then the referee took the board away, put it under the Spanish announce table, and then when Cactus got the the 2x4 back, it was in perfect condition. Like, they had rewrapped it. It was tight. I'm willing to bet it wasn't the same barbed wire, if you know Probably what I mean. Probably not, match. yeah. But, you know, safe, safety is good, so no, not, not knocking it. Uh, Triple H <laughs> took a friggin' backdrop onto a wooden pallet that skewered his calf. It was gross. So mm. he was bleeding from his leg. Was, he said he had to pour his, the blood out of his boot after the match. Like, literally, like, took his I'd, boot off and just... I'd believe it. It was... He said it was to the point where the referee had gotten word that if they needed to stop the match, they would stop it and put the belt on Cactus, but Triple H said he could still go. So they wow. so they wound up powering through. Now, all the uh, all the classic uh, fuckery that you expect from Cactus Jack, 2 by 4 barbed wires, thumbtacks, chairs. Uh, they tried to do an homage. At least, with to J- the... At least with Cactus Jack, I always believed it. True. They um, even tried unlike... to do an homage to... Uh, Rumble 99 when uh, they handcuffed uh, Mankind and Rock hit him like 14 times with the chair. They, yeah. They, they did that again, but this time the Rock interfered and whacked Triple H with the chair. See, but I don't uh, mind I don't mind that quote-unquote death match. It's that crap like we watched last Wednesday. Well, that I made oh, like 10 minutes guts. through last Wednesday. Yeah. Oh, Talk about so everything, dumb. but the kitchen stink. I'm see if I can run down everything they use. They use uh, broken glass, thumbtacks. That was and that was it. That was it for me. Broken glass. Okay. I was done. Okay. After you stop watching, apparently you missed the bed of nails. <laughs> I saw a replay of it, so now uh, I didn't uh, completely uh, miss it. Yeah, uh, one of the bucks had the thumbtack shoe. You know, the thumbtacks came through the cage. top of the cage. Yeah, right. Oh yeah, he was up on the top of the cage, cage and he let it rain down over the over the guys. Uh, come on, just drop an anvil if you're up there. Uh, uh, Moxley coming out with a fork <laughs> and forking Omega and Hangman, but neither one of them were bleeding. Right. Uh, uh, or, uh looked... what was it? Kota Ibushi after the match, dropping himself on the thumbtacks. Yeah, he what just bumped idiot. on the thumbtacks for no reason. Uh, Ibushi looked about twenty pounds overweight in this match. Uh, not the chiseled Adonis that we remember from New Japan. He let himself go a little bit, and I know he hadn't been in the ring for a year, but oh well. It, it's it wasn't not the same. Not the Kota we remember even from the not cruiserweight the... championship. No, 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 and because uh, when he's when he's in tip top shape, he he can be damn good. I know. Some people tend to shit on him because he wrestled a blow-up doll once in Japan. And, you know, I get it. But he's done other things since then. And has had a good career in Japan. I'm, I'm, I'll give him his due, you know. World champion. There's a lot uh, of people that have had champion. good careers in Japan that aren't getting over here, which I totally get it. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's not yeah. our style. It's not It's not for everybody. It's true. <laughs> nope. Uh, but I, I thought maybe Ibushi would would show out a little bit more. I won't be surprised to see a Golden Lovers tag team run out of this. Uh, Ibushi and Omega maybe going for the tag titles. Uh, that would be fun. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm a, Omega can't go after MJF because that's clearly going to be Orange Cassidy going after MJF for the for the world title. I hate you, Mark. You put it out <laughs> in the universe. You put it out in the. We've been you putting put it, it out, out in the universe, the universe before. I'm. I've, my hands are clean here. No, because you've been re-talking about it, and I'm I'm, I'm actually I don't have scared. a spoon, but I can stir the pot to the best of them, lady. You had a ladle. I, I had a ladle. It's in the ladle. kitchen. It's back in the kitchen. Uh, I think we may have used <laughs> it the other day. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, but, uh, yeah. Cactus and Triple H never had a bad match, even though they were not the most technically proficient. I mean, they did the Hell in a Cell where they backed up Cactus through the roof again. Uh, but those first two Cactus Triple H matches, I'm not counting the stuff with Mankind or Dude Love. The two matches at the Garden, I think, were my probably my two favorite Cactus Jack matches ever, including like ECW and WCW. No, oh, wow. 
So that's yeah. why that's at the top of my uh, my list there. So that will conclude our top 10 Tuesday. And uh, I kind of started paying bills the first time your computer froze, Mingers, but we'll pick it up. And uh, okay. just to remind everybody, ProWrestlingTees.com slash JTRPod for several of our uh, t-shirt uh, options. Uh, you see just a handful there. You see Mingers is wearing the Tony's Florida-style fast food booking shirt. Uh, bump card, independent wrestling matters, host fights, draw money, or just a simple JTR crew shirt. The back has the uh, the logo, and you'll see in the top right hand corner of your screen, but with uh, without the red. So just uh, something to to think about there. Uh, AJ makes a very sound point. Uh, you don't have to have technical skill to beat some ass. Very true. Very uh, true. All right, so along with Pro Wrestling Tees, of course, we got BrainBusterTees.com slash other slash JTR dash podcast dash network. Uh, just a breathe. Uh, Did you breathe? For, <laughs> I, I breathe. I breathe. Uh, so you got some more options there, not only from Jumping the Rail, but from the Zero One Shootout, from Gold Rush, from the network itself. Uh, there you see the network logo on the top left, our Heart Foundation logo here on the right. Yeah, Minders with her spoons because, you know, she likes to stir the pot. Uh, the JTR Army shirt for all you KISS fans. And we might have to get this one for Ace, because if his nickname is the Black Diamond, that makes me assume he's a KISS fan. <laughs> you know, Ace has uh, some... I, I actually went and looked. Ace has some shirts on jumping the, or on a Pro Wrestling Tees. Cool. Yep. Yeah, so go check out Ace's stuff. There's a lot of uh, our Zero One friends that have some uh, pre WTs stores on there, so check that out. Uh, yeah, <laughs> the wife's waiting Guess for me so she I, can, uh... I got my, I got my two new shirts. I've got my uh -huh. Anakin Murphy shirt. And I've got my Kenny Callick shirt. And I got my bump card shirt. Nice. And I got my get your shit and move shirt. <laughs> there you go. Uh, oh, Menders, uh, we've got a few extra designs here on, uh, Brain Buster Tees. We've talked about the NWO style. You got the wolf pack or you got hollywood if you so choose uh a new one uh this week i kind of had a little fun with this i kind of did like a kind of a futuristic -y kind of a logo for when ai takes over uh uh-huh there you see it's kind of a tronny kind oh. of a thing i with chrome uh there you know the yeah. simple. so check that out and then uh, of course and i gotta go back to the uh, zero one shootout overlay to get to the uh, other ones uh if you're, for all you fans of Mindy Elam, if you feel so inclined, I'm a Minders guy. Or if you're the other side of the gender spectrum, I'm a Minders girl. I don't know. For all those that don't identify as either, should we get an I'm a Minders person shirt? Maybe. Nah. Maybe. We'll Have we sold any of them yet? Have we sold any of them yet? Uh, that is classified information. I haven't got the report yet from, <laughs> uh, from this month, so I'm not sure. Uh, we'll, then also, we'll uh, think about it. If you want a picture, if you want a shirt with my uh, my punum on it, uh, there you go. The Potagy, uh SCMC, what that means, he'll tell you. Uh, and I'm just gonna get back to here so I can play the outro music. Uh, next episode <laughs> is gonna be the big two year anniversary, Menders. Uh, Are we having guests next another... time too, or no? Uh, no guests. Okay. We're doing our next fantasy draft episode though. Where you, me, and I believe I think Barry's going to join us, and we're going to draft okay. our uh, uh, independent. Now we, draft. we need. So our I was going to say we need some stipulations on where we're going and what ones we can use. And uh, if you're signed to AEW or WWE, I'd say you're off the table. If you're MLW or Impact or ROH, I think you're it's fine. Okay. So, yeah, as long as okay. you're not part of the big so two. So we're sticking with those three, though. We're not. Okay. Are we doing locals or two or no? Oh, yeah. Oh, no. In, independent. Okay. Anybody. Yeah. Anybody on the indies. But okay. the, 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 the limit is if you're if you're signed to AEW or WWE, you're not independent anymore. If you're. There's guys Sorry, in Impact. Stay away from MLW, our old booking stuff. <laughs> yeah. MLW and Impact still have guys going doing independent dates. So they, so they count. Yeah. Okay. Technically, AEW does too, but they have contracts, so they're not independent. Yeah. So that's what we had to look forward to for the big two-year episode. Uh, then uh, after that, 
we'll just keep doing what we do, talking. You're going to be laid up for a bit, so you have a lot of wrestling to watch. I'm sure a lot of opinions. Uh, we'll, we'll work we'll on keep, getting some we'll more keep guests. Our fingers, keep our fingers crossed that I will be back next, for sure, next Wednesday. Well, tomorrow, obviously, but next Wednesday, because I cannot miss that right. Zero One Shootout podcast next Wednesday. So, No, no we got the champ next Wednesday. Uh, yeah. Joey O'Reilly is going to be joining us. So, and you've kind of got. I might shock him a little bit. I might shock him a little bit. Yeah. You know what? Uh, we'll see. AJ, AJ, says, AJ says, let me get Uh-oh. on the draft. If you can do it without causing trouble, AJ will think <laughs> about it. <laughs> Stick to beer. You know what happens. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and not, not three buckets. Like, uh, oh, you're you, no fun. You wackos. <laughs> All right. Well, before we go, I got to show this picture again. Cowboy Tony. <laughs> so I'm, hold, hold you know I Tony to work d- on that. And here's Tony's reaction every time I show that picture. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's <laughs> such a creepy uh, picture. <laughs> it really is. I, I'll, I'll work on getting color. a friend. Yeah, I'll work on getting our friend to get a cowboy hat for his son, and we'll see what happens. Although, you know, we did see Bang Bang Bart this past week. I mean, Clayton Clark this past weekend, too. Yes. And that the match against Ke- bang, Tanner bang Keeler. Junction, yeah, wh- whatever. Shotgun oh. City. I think it was Shotgun City. But we okay. call him Bang Bang I, Bart. Right. And he seems to take exception to that. But yeah, he doesn't like it. <laughs> stir the pot. You got to stir the pot on everybody. AJ Except started it. It wasn't Quinn. my fault. <laughs> he hates Picking me. Picking on people. <laughs> and we maybe we'll get him on the pod. I don't know. We probably get hit. We could. I we might. We might talk to those guys. I'm sure there's a lot of them that wouldn't mind being on. Sure. I'd like to see us get Sam Knight on at some point. That would be. That would be cool. Damn right, Sam Knight. Damn right, Sam Damn Knight. Knight. Yeah. Uh, let's uh, get out of here, Mark. So I'm hungry and I'm tired. Let's get out of here. Yep. The wife is waiting on me for food. Uh. I think she made fajitas, so I got that to look forward to here. So, until, well, if you're going to watch uh, the shootout tomorrow, we'll see you then. If not, we'll see you in two weeks for our big second anniversary episode. We're looking forward to it. So, for uh, for Menders, this is Reb. Uh, thanks again to Ace Perry for joining us today. That was a lot of fun. And uh, we're going to say goodbye and remind you all, life is hard, work stiff, and we will see you next time. <laughs>